Welcome to the Dice Towers Summer Spectacular, a five-day streaming event with top ten lists, live plays, a host of board game fanatics, and more. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm glad you're all with me tonight. I am joined by a lot of people who you don't often see on the Dice Tower. We have... Well, we're going to let them introduce themselves because that's what the purpose of this panel is here. But first, I'm going to move. Well, I can't do that. Well, what do you do? I was trying to make it so that I would put the questions that didn't block anybody in a little black space here. But <sighs> so they just see life. enough from me all the time. You could just cover me with the questions if you need. Got it. Oh. Now I'm going to stick them, gonna stick them <laughs> here at the very top. All righty. Well, these folks keep... The different Dice Tower conventions going. Now, I know at this point in time, um, I know that at this point in time, conventions are not the number one priority on many people's minds, or they're at least sad about them. Like right now, we should be at Dice Tower East. Many conventions this year have been canceled, but they're not going away forever. They're going to come back, and they've been going on for the past decade. And so this is not, we're not here to talk about the effects of the coronavirus on conventions. You hear enough about that and stuff. We just want to talk about conventions in general, and I wanted to introduce you to the people who run the convention. So we're going to start from those watching this. We're going to start from top to bottom, left to right. So we'll start with Tim. Tim, if you could introduce yourself. And then after Hi. Tim, Kenny, Sharon, and Jason. All right. Hello. My name is Tim Mativier. I live out here in Las Vegas, and I run a Dice Tower West convention. All right. My name is Kenny. Um, I work here in Miami in the office. Um, well, not so much now, but uh, normally I'm in the office, and um, and I, I help run the Dice Tower Retreat. I also help with other things, including our Kickstarter and logistics. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm Sharon Madden, and I'm director of Dice Tower East, and I am also in the Miami area, too, and right here is where all the magic happens, where I run, uh, where, I'm, where I'm planning the convention from, so... Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody. Jason Levine, the cruise directing machine. Um, sometimes I do things other than gaming and playing games with Tom and all the other stuff that I do. And that's what I'm planning that cruise for you guys. Um, so if you're ever looking for me, you know, you'll see me on Facebook. You'll see me all over doing the cruise stuff. In addition to every other crazy thing I do, the videos, the 24 hour marathons, everything else I do for the channel. All righty. Well, and we also, uh, Sharon and Jason and Kenny also were helping with last week's virtual gaming con. So they were involved with that. And there's just a lot of stuff going on um, all the time. And we had a lot of interesting things happen over the past several years. Tim ran MeepleCon for a few years before uh, we partnered up to turn it into Dice Tower West. Uh, Sharon's been gaming for longer than my children have been alive. Um, and, uh, <laughs> of course everyone knows Jason and Kenny, but this year we had a lot of different things. We, we dealt with logistics this year for sure with the Dice Tower Library, getting it from one con to another con to another con. Oh, we dealt yeah. with starting a con in a new location and then finding out that we couldn't even run it there because of the virus. There's just been a lot of things going on. Um, uh, but I'm going to throw this out to those of you watching, um, for questions in a bit. But before I had a couple of my own, and I wanted to just throw these out of the panel. They could be answered by anybody or everybody. But the first one is the one I just think people should hear in a sense of what do people not think about when it comes to running a convention? People think, oh, yeah, you run a convention, you schedule events. But what's something that people might not think about that is a lot of work behind the scenes? Well, I can tell you this. The first thing that I do and I've kind of worked with Kenny and Sharon on this, not so much Tim because he handles it himself, but it's making the contracts with the hotels, the cruise lines, et cetera. And for me, I think that's the most important thing we do because we're trying to get all of you at home and all of you who come to our events, the best rates on the hotel rooms, the best rates on the cruise rooms, the best hotel with the most space. And we always try to negotiate as hard as we can before we even get to the planning stage of finding the best venue for you with the best features 
for hopefully the cheapest price we could find. And that that's what I think is the most important thing that we do behind the scenes that a lot of people don't see or don't recognize. I mean, some do, but a lot of people don't realize how much work we put in just to make sure that they're getting a good deal. Yeah, I definitely would agree with that. And another thing, it's not necessarily something we do behind the scenes, but something people may not be aware of or they know, that uh, it really, really helps us if people book early as soon as they know they're going. Because here in Vegas, what we did when we were running MeepleCon for many years is we would run a mid-meeple. And the reason we would run a mid-meeple was just to get people to pay – and we would get money to help us with the deposits and the hotels and the rooms and all that kind of stuff. Because when you book a hotel or do the event, you're liable for, a, for the money before the event. So we, <laughs> if you know you're going and you know you're going, the earlier you can book, the earlier you get your registration, the better it is for the event. Because then we know we actually have the money to make the event even better. So the yeah. difficulties – with you know working with these hotels they're there to make money right so i found i'm assuming all of you've run into the same problem because i know jason has for sure the difficulties of explaining to them a board game convention because it's different than almost every other convention that they have yes that that certainly is hard to make people understand what we're doing um because most people they they can't imagine this big of a group coming together just to play board games. And most, most of the people we're dealing with don't even know how big the board game world is and just how much is out there. They're, they're just thinking of the ba- the basics, you know, mon- monopoly life um, battleship, but they just don't realize how, how um, huge the world is and how people love to come together. And the first time they see something like that, they're, they're just amazed and, they have no idea that anything like this ever exists. And when they see the library, the, this impressive Dice Tower library that we have, they're just blown away. Yes. I mean, it, the se- this goes into the second most important thing we do, which is logistics, which I know Kenny will be able to talk a lot about. Um, but if the first thing we always have to figure out is where are people going to game, whether it's in a ballroom or in the case of the cruise, there is a conference center but we also need to book space in the dining room and the Windjammer buffet at night to make sure that there's enough space for all of us to game. And explaining this to a cruise line or, or explaining to a hotel that we need X amount of tables and we need this many seats and this many tables and all of this aligned in order for our guests to be able to play the games they want to play, it it's very tricky. And once we get it done, though, it's very satisfying knowing that everyone's able to play games and that they're going to enjoy themselves once they actually get to the event that we planned all this time. In addition to that, I feel like always, um, you know, since we do these, uh, these open library 24 kind of five events, people are, they have a hard time wrapping their, their minds around the fact that your event will start very early and will go into like, you know, three or four or five in the morning. Um, it's unusual uh, for that to happen. Most of the time, these uh, these things are events that start and end, you know, at you know reasonable hours. So that's always been an odd thing, right? Yeah, and one of the good, the good things we have here in Vegas going for us uh, when it's going to negotiate no hotels and talking contracts, as soon as we say the word game, because that sort of fits in with uh, what goes on here in Vegas, table games and stuff, all of a sudden their ears per- perk up a little bit. So they're a little bit more willing to listen to us to get us in there at a convention. And as they've seen, um, I keep trying to tell them, which is hard, you know, because Vegas has a lot of conventions, is we are very, very low maintenance. Once we start... You get the table set up. We don't really need to hear from you again because <laughs> we're just playing games. So they really appreciate us once we're there. All right, let me take a break here real quick. We'll come back in, but I just realized we should talk about a contest. We'll run a contest during this panel here. All um, right. You all who are watching can enter this contest by emailing us at dice tower. I'm at contest at dice tower.com contest at dice tower.com. And you can win one of these games, Sanctum, Alpha or the exchange. This is for North America only, but don't worry, we'll have a contest that's worldwide a little bit later tonight. 
Sanctum Alpha or the Exchange. Just email us and in the subject line, put the word cons, C-O-N-S, as in conventions, not things we're pulling off to scam you from your money. Cons. And in the description, put your name and your email. And tomorrow morning, we'll put up a list on our website of all the winners of all our contests today. Now, when it comes to gaming events, there's the conventions. There's a lot of different ways to do conventions. And, you know, we have everything from the humongous Gen Con to tiny, intimate get-togethers. And that's when we, the retreats are smallest convention. Currently, Dice Tower West is our biggest convention. What are things that you think are a must and things that are not so important, but, you know, they could be at some conventions? In terms of what? In terms of events for the... Like, yeah, when you're planning a convention, what do you need to prepare to do? So... I, I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> so, so basically, you know, the first thing we have to do is... Tom always wants to put events in. So there's always an opening game show. There's always a closing game show. There's always those little things like that, like at Dice Tower Con, which now is Dice Tower East, we've always done the awards. So one of the things you have to plan for is shows and a showroom to do the Dice Tower events, whether they're top live top tens or any of that. Um, that's one of the big things, and that obviously – ties in with the logistics of making sure that you can get space and for a land-based convention it's a little easier we could just block out a room or a part of a ballroom for the crews it's tricky because we have to find out when they're not doing shows and then we get things like the ice rink so we actually take over the whole ice skating rink to do it but we have to plan around the crews because they also do ice skating shows so we have to plan our times around when they'll let us have the space to be able to do it so there's a lot of tricky logistics involved. I guess what I what I was looking at as I was planning Dice Tower East, um, I, I was trying to keep um, the comfort of all the attendees in mind because I, I have attended several board game conventions of various sizes. Um, the biggest convention I've been to is Dragon Con in Atlanta, which really isn't a board game convention per se, but they, they have um, thousands upon thousands of people. And I just, as I'm planning, I'm trying to think of, okay, as, as a convention goer, what would I like and what would I not like? Like, is this area going to be too crowded? Is this something that my attendees are going to be able to get to easily? Are they going to um, be trying to dodge in and out of people? So I'm, I'm just trying to keep in mind the flow of traffic and just try to place tables and booths and things just in a spot that's going to make make it easy for people to get to um, and you know just, just uh, be able to find their way around easily. To me, I think one of the most important things, especially uh, when you have the Dice Tower name and brand on the convention, is to ensure that the attendees have access to Tom and to Z and to Jason Kenny to, to make sure they have access to everybody. So that's why, to me, it's imperative that have an area where the attendees can always play games with the Dice Tower uh, staff or team crew, I don't know what name you use for them. And also, uh, we had a time, uh, it was 11 o'clock every day, where all of the members of the Dice Tower, the reviewers, the podcasters, the video uh, people, would all be in an area, so the attendees were guaranteed to be able to have some interaction with anybody from the Dice Tower. So to me, that's one of the most important things, especially with the Dice Tower brand on uh, our, con our events. Yeah, I also think that having just some, I mean, most people just come to play games and they're happy with just sitting at a table for like basically the whole event and just playing games. Uh, but then having like other stuff, which not so much the retreat, but um, a lot of the other the other cons have it, which is the um, having like an auction, which we you know normally run at um, at Dice Tower East. The uh, having the uh, um, Stuff like the um, a trade, having like a, a math trade, game trade type uh, event, um, or a flea market, which Dice Tower West had as well. I think people like those those little types of things that you know are not just playing games. I, I think everybody's a little bit different, but um, it, it, at the retreat we have this key lime uh, night, which is 
I guess I don't know if nobody else has that. That's for sure. Um, we need to have it. That sounds fantastic. No, I can't do it for more than one event. Highly ship pies to Vegas. I don't. I think they'd melt on the plane if we brought them. Yeah, oh boy, that sounds so fantastic. <laughs> So, so the, the thing I've learned, right, so there's all these different events, is you can't have carbon copy events. And every event's going to be slightly different. I mean, there's just things that will happen on the cruise that can happen at Dice Tower West and vice versa. Um, also, everyone's going to come to you and say they really like something. But just like the Aesop's Fable, the, two, uh, the old man, the boy, and the donkey, you cannot please everybody. Some people are completely content going to a con and they want a game 24 hours for five days straight and they're done. Other people, if you don't have exhibitors, they're unhappy. Some people just go to play a few times and then they go to see the city the event's in or on the cruise, you know, see the cruise. And you want to try to meet as many of these people as possible, but you just can't get them all. So I think it's best if an event is a, has a focus point. Like I think Gen Con has... They have everything, right? But they certainly put a focus on there's a huge exhibitor room with a lot of stuff to buy. Some cons don't have exhibitors at all, and that's also fine. So how do you decide when to cut something? Like, you know, that's just not as important to this particular con. It, it, it's tricky. I mean, like for the cruise, for example, you, Royal Caribbean won't allow vendors to actually sell stuff until we get to the point where we could charter the whole ship so we can't have a vendor's room so what we do instead is we get the vendors to uh basically make goodie bags where we give out goodie bags to all the attendees so they get a whole bag of games it's the closest thing we could do to a vendor's room and they're usually happy and we try to tie that in for the vendors as well where they get a teach session so all the games that you get in your goodie bag you're taught the game by the vendor so it's not just something that you throw aside in, in your luggage it's something that you actually get to learn and play while you're there and we kind of want it to be something good for the attendees something good for the vendors and the best we can do out of a situation where we can't actually have them selling stuff and i i think it's there's some trial and error that has to go into it too you know you, you just have to keep trying things and you know, one, one year it might work well and maybe the next year it might not. And then you have to decide, okay, you know, how do we want to continue with this? So I, th I think, you know, you just have to kind of wait and see what happens and just pay attention to what your attendees are saying and, and you know, just, just find out what, what they really love. And if there's something that they don't and you're getting a lot of feedback on that, then, you know, that's, that's maybe something you want to reconsider. No, I would agree with Sharon that, yeah, it's a lot of it, it's trial and error and it's growing into uh, your events and your feel and uh, seeing what people like and getting feedback and actually listening to your attendees to what they want to do. But I think it's also important with the events that we have here that each one is definitely unique because Dice Tower West, here we are in Las Vegas, which is its own living, breathing thing. You've got Dice Tower East in Orlando, so they've got Universal and uh, Disney World. You've got the cruise, which is its own thing. And then you've got the retreat, which is just a very small, intimate event. So I think it's really, really nice that they are all four so uniquely different as well. And I've learned that I have no problem. I mean, I'm always trying new stuff. And if it, if it fails, I have no problem pulling it. We've definitely right. tried stuff at all four cons. There's something I've tried and I was like, yeah, that didn't work. We won't do that again. It's easy enough. I mean, I don't see any reason to dig in my heels. And every time I do that, one or two people come to me and go, but I loved it, my favorite part. And I just have to go, I get it, but it didn't work in this particular case. And I don't know that we've ever run a con ever where there wasn't at least even the smallest cons, somebody complained about something. So that's the thing. What do you do when the people come who complain about something you know, I it because uh, initial reaction is shut up. This con has been going perfectly. Everyone just told me they had a great time, and here you are. I saw you having fun, but now you say you're not. But that's not the proper response, obviously. But what do we do when people complain? Uh, obviously, you know, you, you want to listen, and you know, my my goal as a director is I want to make everyone feel like they're number one in my book because they are. And if they come to me, I certainly want to hear what they have to say. I want to listen. I may learn something that I didn't even realize 
from that. So my goal is just, you know, as, as much as, you know, it may, it may be the end of the day, I may be tired and wanting to go to bed. You're still my first priority and I want to listen to what you have to say. And, and if you feel that it's important enough that I need to know, then, hey, I'm all ears. So oh, it, it makes sense. I mean, I, I say this all the time. I say this to people in person. I say this to in the Facebook group. I say this all over. Basically, you know, anyone who comes to our conventions, they're not just fans, but without the fans, we wouldn't be what we are. And we appreciate you so much. And I try to do everything I can to make people happy, whether whether I'm at a Dice Tower Con, like Dice Tower East, or whether I'm at Dice Tower West and I'm out there representing the Dice Tower as Jason Levine, the gaming machine, and I'm out playing games with as many people as possible or teaching games to as many people as possible, or whether I'm on the cruise trying to take care of people's problems. Like one year we had someone who had a wheelchair and we had to get him a handicap room, and I spent an hour and a half with the guest relations hotel manager to make sure I could get this person a handicap room because they didn't assign him a handicap room ahead of time. And it's any little thing you can do to make someone feel better is what I do, and I will go out of my way to make sure that everyone has a good time. I don't like anyone to feel that they've had a bad time. And me, my goal in any event that I'm involved in is to please every single person. I don't want to hear that anyone had a bad time. And if you do, I want to please you in any way I can <laughs> to make you feel better about everything you've done. Yeah. I also feel like that if when you're running a convention every year, I think that as Every other every event is going to be a little bit different than the year before. It could be for different reasons. It could be there's more attendees, and now you went from you know having 300 people to being to 500 people. Well, that makes a difference, right? Because now you have to worry about other things. Um, and also, I think from year to year, things it should get better to the event just because you're 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 you should learn from your from what went wrong the year before that. So I know that for the cruise for sure we've. We we've we every year we've had to adapt it right to to the to the growth of it because the very first cruise I think we had um, maybe like three hundred attendees four hundred and twenty seven <laughs> Penny <laughs> <laughs> but who's counting but who's counting <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right I, I know think, that I think that's oh. key oh, I'm sorry I no go ahead Shane he is just as as a director you have to always be adapting. Um, and you know, just, just when you think your day is going to go a certain way, or you're going to be able to do certain things, you're going to have something else that's going to need your attention. So it's, it's all about adapting, but keeping in mind that, you know, each and every attendee is important. No, that's absolutely correct, Sharon. Just like you said, yes, it's very, it's imperative. It's very important that you listen to people and take in what they say, because somebody, because if, if somebody is thinking something, the odds are that other people may be thinking the same thing, even if it's two or three other people. But also, like Tom said, it's 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 we have to make sure that we always have the willingness to try new things, to experiment, because hopefully there may be something that is wow, you know, lightning in a bottle, as they say, and you realize, wow, we why haven't we done this for the past six years? This is this is fantastic. But to always try new things, be willing to try and be willing to fail at the same time if they don't work. Because at the end of the day, it's a board game convention. Nobody's dying. So if it, something doesn't work, it's no big deal. We'll just move on and try something else. You know, along those, um, that same note, I, I was realizing, um, I think also your support structure, like, you know, the people you have involved, the volunteers, oh, yeah. um, all that is kind of really important for getting that kind of feedback just because, you know, I, I just, I recall the, the, the PAX Unplugged, uh, their support team, I always, I, every time I go there, I feel like they have such a well-oiled machine there. You, know, you, you have a problem, there's a person assigned as an exhibitor, uh, that's my perspective, a person that's assigned to you who will find uh, the solutions to your problems. Um, and um, I, I just think that's really important, just having uh, a organization where if somebody has a problem or, or some suggestions or something that it could kind of, the right people hear what the you know hear the the suggestions kind of goes up the chain. Absolutely. All right, folks. I know people have asked some questions. I apologize. We'll take questions now. But if you already asked one, if you could re ask it, because a we may have answered some of the questions that have been asked already, and b um, it's easier for me to find them if they're at the bottom. So if anyone here has any questions, they can do that. While I'm waiting for some questions to pop up here. Um, 
the uh, don't forget there's a contest. Just email us at di- contest at dicetower.com and put cons in the description of the video uh, in the, in the, and sorry in the subject and then in the description of your email put your name and address and well you could win a copy of Sanctum Alpha or the Exchange. Normally this would be printed several times in the uh, comment section, but the two people who do that are actually on the video here. So I'm working on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh-huh. <laughs> there you go. But all so, three games are amazing. So no matter what, you're going to get a really awesome game because all three of them are really great. Um, the Cora Lou here is asking. She's I'm curious how many participants do we have for the board game geek dice tower virtual con? I don't know if that's that's BGG's number. The share, I think. Or no, did they, they did it? mention, um, I think it was like 1,800? Yes, it was, that right? it was a number. It was, 18, it, was, it was in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, there was a lot of people, a lot more people than, we thought, than, than I thought. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I'm going to just tell you right now, I'm not going to entertain any questions about, are you going to open a con up somewhere? Because I can tell you emphatically, 100%, no. All right, <laughs> four cons <laughs> is already giving me white hair. So, but this person, Tim, says, is there any chance to move Dice Tower West a couple months later in the year? Dice Tower Cruise followed by Dice Tower West a month later leaves 10 months of boredom for West Coast people. But Come to the East Coast. Right. That's in July. We, we, we have yeah. to spread them throughout the year. We, we can't. <laughs> Besides, the cruise is on the East Coast. Right. That's why you got to have a cruise on the West Coast, Jason. Get working on it. Uh, as, as soon as we charter a ship on the East Coast, then we're going to do a smaller West Coast cruise. We'll call it Dice Tower Cruise Retreat, and that'll be the small cruise on the West Coast, plus we'll have the full ship on the East Coast. So, Tom, Tom never say never, because one day we might do two cruises. There we go. Right. Yep. <laughs> what is the toughest, ask Gator Dave, what's the toughest aspect of planning or running a convention that was a big or complete surprise? So, for me... And this is interesting because it goes back to something Tim said earlier and something that Tom said. When you, Tim was talking about money collection and Tom was talking about how it's a con or con, not a con. But well, yes, I was uh, I've had, definitely joking. I've had, people, I've had people actually tell me, why are you collecting our money now? And is this for real? And are we actually going to be able to go on a cruise? Because we're asking people to pay in advance. And the reason we do is because we actually have to pay Royal Caribbean and we have a schedule where we have to pay Royal Caribbean all of the money. I mean, last year it was like $600,000 that we had to pay Royal Caribbean for this cruise for everyone's rooms. I and know we, I did the taxes. We, we, have to, we have to pay this on a timely schedule. If we don't, Royal Caribbean will penalize us. And if we don't fill the rooms, we also get penalized. But yes, I've had actually people where I've had to call them on the phone because I – Something that I do, which I think is really good customer service, is anyone that has any problem, I like to personally call them and take care of it because I think it's important to connect with your guests and to connect with the con goers. So I will spend the time to call someone. And yes, I've had people actually ask me if it was real and if we were just trying to con them out of money. And I said, no, it's real. Even though you're paying nine months, 10 months in advance, you will be going on a cruise and you will absolutely love it and have the best time of your life. And 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 I find that The more you connect with people, the better it is. And it's also nice, not just beforehand when people have questions and I will take the time to call them, but I think it's important that when we do have the conventions, which which we all do and which is something that the Dice Tower completely stands for, is to have a welcoming convention where everyone who comes feels welcome. We make sure that every single guest feels important, that they're welcome, that they can join us at any table, and not have any worries about anything. And to me, that's super important. That's part of what the Dice Tower and, and our whole family-friendly gaming atmosphere stands for. Yeah, I wanted to mention something about um, kind of like gotchas with the contract because when you do make a contract, or, or you, rather before you actually sign that contract, to, to really give it a good look, have, have like a legal, if it, depending on, you know, uh, have a legal person look at it, make sure you understand what are the penalties for attrition or for deadlines and that kind of stuff? Because uh, they're, the, the, the hotel um, sometimes will not be as nice as you think they'll be. They're super nice when you first meet them. <laughs> and so, you know, when they're trying to get you to sign that contract, they are overly nice. 
yeah. and some, something else that's important that we learned recently is make sure in the force majeure section that it includes pandemic going there forward. There you go. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> And there's also uh, something really yeah. unique out here in Vegas that uh, that I have a really tough time with when it comes to negotiation. So I don't know if uh, if people remember the first Dice Tower West, everybody got a buffet every day, right? A breakfast buffet and all that kind of stuff. Because what had happened was, is when we found the venue and negotiated the contract, it was so close to the date that, you know, they were willing to give us all this kind of stuff just to book the space. But the more you book out in advance, the harder it is to negotiate. It's actually a reverse thing because you would think, hey, I want to sign a multi-year contract. You guys should give me the world. And they're like, no, we're not going to give you anything. We'll just wait, you know, and try to, you know, get it a higher price. So it's it, that's the problem. I don't know if that happens in the rest of the country. It might be unique here to Vegas, but it is horrible having to it, it's sort of counterintuitive right when it comes to negotiation it, it's really tough that's yeah, it's, inter interesting tim because the cruise is the exact opposite every single year after the cruise ends we're, we're going 2021 assuming that we do sail it's going to be our fifth year of the cruise and every year after the cruise i have a post-mortem with royal caribbean where i will have like a three-hour meeting with Royal Caribbean. We'll go through what went well, what didn't go well. And every year, they will make sure to give us more in the next contract. So every year, they're willing to give us a little more because they love our business and they love our group and they want to do right by us. So everything that I negotiate in gets kept year over year, plus they give us more. Like like right now, and this is one of the things that I've been negotiating while, while we speak, I've been able to get everyone who has a while balcony. While we're speaking right now. Yes, Literally, I was on the phone with Royal Caribbean, not today, but like a week ago, and I was able to negotiate every single person who gets a balcony room or above. So if you're a balcony, a junior suite, any kind of regular suite, they're going to extend the balcony $100 onboard credit to every single one of our guests now because, you know, I went back and forth for us. So I got every single person $100 more. We also got a thing where if the I really feel like we're, we're straying off the question here, but keep going. Oh, but if the cruise gets canceled now, I also negotiated this, which Tom's going to love. Every single person who is already booked, you're not only going to get to roll over to 2022, but in 2023, you will get 25% credit towards 2023 as well. So Royal Caribbean is giving us, if they cancel the cruise and we have to cancel it, 125% credit for every room we have instead of just 100. So I've been working hard to get cool stuff for our group because, you know, we don't know if we're going yet, but I want to make sure that anyone who does book is going to get something awesome if, if it has to get canceled because I love all you guys. Nice. <laughs> all right, let's jump to virtual cons. So this morning I was talking to Mr. Bonacore, and he talked about the success of the uh, virtual gaming con. And he said he thinks from now on every gaming con will have a virtual con tied with it in the future. And I didn't have time to tell him to jump in the lake at the moment. <laughs> um, tell him that. I think that there is a small possibility this will happen. But I don't think that people realize how much work went into that virtual con last week. And how much work goes into a normal con. And if you're going to run them both simultaneously. Ha, 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 ha. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it won't happen. Okay, but Stephen it's not going to be the same. Stephen Bonacore, I know you just retired or announced that you're retiring, but jump in a lake on that one because <laughs> I don't. It's so much work to put on a an actual. All right, face I love Bonacore. Don't let's not jump down his throat. <laughs> <laughs> I love him too. I love him too. I, I love him too. He's amazing. I, I'm joking about jumping in a lake, of course, but. It's so much work to put on an actual face-to-face -face convention. I can't imagine many conventions doing both at the same time because the virtual convention took a lot of work too. And I just can't imagine trying to organize both at the same time. I think virtual conventions will be a thing for another however long that we're in pandemic world. But once we get out of pandemic world and get back to a more normalized world, I think we'll be back to conventions again and there won't be a virtual element. No, no, no. That I disagree with. I think we're going to have virtual cons in the future. I really yes. do. And they might even be in conjunction. 
I don't think they'll be as cool as when we did last week unless the con manages to get so much staff that they can do both. But a person like myself, if I'm going to the actual con, I'm not participating in a virtual con at all. Right. So I think there'll be separate things. We might do Dice Tower Virtual Con in the future. Right, but you can see the need for it, right? I mean, you can oh, fully sure. understand. You can fully understand why if people can't come all the way to Vegas or all the way to Orlando or on the cruise, this gives them an opportunity to feel like they're part of it. So, I mean, I can fully understand it. But you're right; the logistics of it are just insane. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel. I have I, to say, oh, go ahead, Kenny. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I'm probably going to say the same thing you are, which yeah. is basically uh, that um, the BGG, I think, uh, now has has learned uh, kind of um, by doing this kind of like, you know, being among the first to do this, has learned a lot on how to do this right. Um, it, I, I feel like this last month, because really it was put together in, I think we worked on it for like three weeks. Oh, um, I think a little, the, the month of June pretty much, yeah, I, I, I think at least. <laughs> yeah, there's so much that was, that went into it. And I think that it was a learning experience throughout the whole thing. I think that, like Jeff could, Jeff Anderson, which is you know the um, oh, he's amazing, he's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the event coordinator for BGG. He um, could could write now like a, a thesis on how to run a virtual <laughs> gaming con um, for the world and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna ha- it'll well obviously it's gonna happen again because um, they're running the uh, the event again in in uh, later this year as a replacement to the BGG con. But um, I, I feel like uh, that this might become a, maybe a little trend. I'm not, I'm not sure for the near future. Um, I'm wondering how many other people are looking into, to like, you know, doing something similar for as a replacement to what they were going to do or as a, an additional thing to a future con. No, and yeah, I get, and I, I have, oh, go ahead. Tom. Oh, go ahead, Sharon. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, as, as, um, you know, from, from uh, the standpoint of uh, I, w- I was assisting Jeff in, in any way I could, and it felt during the convention, it felt like I was running an actual convention, even though I was doing it from right here. Um, I was watching the Discord channel. Um, I was just kind of seeing what people were doing, peeking in the Twitch channels. Um, I, I felt like I was running a convention and boy, you know, and, and I was working most of the day and, and I'll tell you Sunday, I was pretty exhausted and yeah. I wasn't, I didn't have the physical running around checking on things, but I was sitting here most of the day and just looking at different things and just, you know, watching what was going on. And, you know, that was tiring in and of itself. But, you know, I, I think, you know, given what, what, uh, we pulled off with them. I, I think it, it was amazing. And I think the people just loved it. And I'm just really glad for the part that we played in it. Yeah, it, it's tricky. Um, I think for us specifically, Dice Tower events, that it's harder for us to pull it off when actual events happen again. We we tried something similar. I don't know if you remember this, Tom, the one year that we tried the auction to have how both- I, How would I forget that? To have both people voting voting online on the live YouTube feed as well as bidding in person. And we were taking bids both ways and it was really tricky to do that. And for for us, we spent so much time with the face-to-face people that during virtual con, I actually spent time playing games with people like I would do at a regular convention. I also ran events like I would do at a regular convention. But how you could handle both and handle virtual people and live people is kind of tricky and there's a lot of things if anything, I think we would end up with a different convention that would be virtual as opposed to combining it with one of the face-to-face Yeah, I ones. think in the future, we're going to have virtual cons. Even after the pandemic's over, they're not going to go away because introverts like them, people who can't get to a con, people who have to work but still would like to go to a con. These are great for them. And like I said, if there is a fifth Dice Tower con going to start in the future, it would be Dice Tower Virtual Con because it's something we can do. It's just that doing it simultaneously with another con would require maybe not twice the amount of staff, but it would require pretty close to that. And yeah, then I agree. the guests of honor at the, at the con to do both would be exhausting. And like Jason mentioned, we did try to put a lot of Dice Tower Con online in the past. And I found that I was ignoring the people at the actual con to do the stuff live. And... I said, forget that. We got to concentrate on the people that are here. 
On a side note, we're currently running Dice Tower Summer Spectacular. This is part of that. I'm not calling this a con. This is just a series of shows that we're doing and live stuff. However, the amount of work that went into this felt <laughs> like the amount of work that went into a con. We have put a month of just straight work into this. We're going to do it again. Maybe. Don't ask me tomorrow. <laughs> like, ask me in a week, you know? No, it, it's good. It's fun. But you, you can't keep it, adding. Sometimes you have to subtract. Yeah. And, and you know, keep in mind, I, I was helping with the Summer Spectacular. I helped with Virtual Con. I'm also setting up Dice Tower East 2021, transferring room reservations and tickets. So I, I have, th I have, well, I'm two. I, I got rid of one. I've got two things I'm juggling right now. And soon I'll have one. So things will slow down. But, you know, the, the month of June was, was, uh, was uh, I, had, I had a lot going on. <laughs> but to it was all end. good. Just as a heads up, stuff. Dice Tower is taking next week off. Um, we will be back. <laughs> we will be back the week after that. We'll be doing board game breakfast and crowd surfing next week, and that's it. We'll be back full gear, but I feel like we'll be tired. We're not even halfway through here yet, and I need to get a cot here at the studio. All right, let's jump off sleep. work. And Pod Six Network here says, "What is the first convention event that made you feel fulfilled in what you do?" Or I'll just say any part of a con. What part you were like, it just really satisfied you, that part of the con? So for me, obviously, the first time we stepped on a cruise ship, uh, most people know this story already that I told Tom, we need to do one on a cruise. And he was like, no way, cruises are romantic. And no, that is not the conversation. But <laughs> Jason asked me to go on a cruise with him. And I told him no, because if I ever went on a cruise, I would go with my wife because cruises are for romance. And then I explained to him that cruises, that he was watching The Love Boat from like 40 years ago and that cruises aren't about romance anymore and they're actually adventurous and cool. And I, I still, I'm going on a cruise with my wife and not you, but continue. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, so... Tom actually took his whole family on a cruise and he got back and I, I, I had to take his van at the time. I drove him there in the van. I picked him up. And when I opened the van to, to, to let him back in, he goes, start the planning now. And that was the first exciting moment I had. I was like, yes, we're doing it. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm going full force on this one. And, and then the second most exciting is when I talked him into doing this past year, I said, we are going to do a show on the ice rink. And he's like, can we do that? And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to get this going. And Royal Caribbean actually let us use the ice rink. And we did a whole show on ice skates. And it was, it was really fun. awesome. It was fun. <laughs> what about you, Tim? Yeah, for, for me in particular, um, it was, it's kind of like the first and last. So the very first uh, MeepleCon we ran, um, Dave and I were – we were begging, hoping, pleading f just to get 100 people. That's If we got 100, we would have been over the moon. And we ended up getting like 180 or something like that. It was, it was just mind-boggling. And then this last one, uh, Dice Tower West, the second one, it was so fulfilling where I was actually able to like play a game and realize that what we have learned over the past six years and the wonderful staff and volunteers we had mm -hmm. that – I was able to just kind of enjoy myself and play a game, and the con was able to be managed by all these wonderful people. It was, it was just such a great feeling knowing that um, you've got the right people in place, the thing is going, you see happy people, and I can sit and play a game. It, it was just fantastic. Well, I think my uh, moments – it's actually – I think uh, it's always kind of like the same moment is – like the Saturday at the uh, at the cruise when um, things are kind of coming to an end, um, and uh, we everyone's kind of like a little bit sad that we'll it's ending because the next day we'll be getting off the ship. Um, but everybody's so happy of how it went, and you know, almost like wanting another day. But it's a it's a good feeling of knowing that everything went well, and it's been like a successful event. Um, and also, you you feel like uh, a, like a sense of a, of accomplishment, you know. Um, so that's I, I think that's the Saturday night of, of the cruise. I think that's that's usually my favorite, you know, moment. <laughs> yeah, 
after and for me after at for after uh, virtual gaming con was trying to close it was kind of like you know seeing all the the positive comments and you know just how great a time everyone had it's it's you know you you, you feel you know like you did what you set out to do and um it even though it was a long road getting to where you were everybody had a good time and that that's a really great feeling i have one more moment which is will harken back to Tom from a long time ago. I don't, I know he remembers this, even though I'm gonna say, I don't know if you remember this, <laughs> just, to, just to tease you. Um, we had, this was back in 2011. We had a committee where we were going, where we talked about, let's do a convention. Let's do it in Miami. What are we gonna call it? Hurricane Con, Miami Con. Um, and we had, a we had a committee and we spent all these committee meetings talking about a convention. And then Tom came back and said, Meetings cool are stuff's stupid. Work with us. Yeah, meetings are stupid. Yes, he said meetings are stupid. He hates meetings. And guess what? We're going to do a convention. And that very first Vice Terracon, which was back in 2012, the very first time we put on a convention was very meaningful because we accomplished something at the time to say, you know, we can do this. And, you know, now it's eight, almost nine years later, and we've done eight conventions in Orlando, two retreats two dice to our west even though tim's done meeple con way before that and we've done four cruises with another one to come and we've put on a lot of events since then all from these meetings years ago where we said we can do this and it that is just makes me feel good that we we've worked so hard and brought joy to so many attendees over the years yeah a special shout out to patrick and molly and heather and the other people who helped that first con and those to, to help Dice Tower Con, because I always thought that that was a pipe dream, and to have a con become a reality was a big deal. I'm actually going to be talking on my own personal note about this tomorrow. We're talking about our top 10 convention experiences, so I'll, I'll wait till then to talk about that. Here's an interesting question. Karen says, how were sponsors slash special guests chosen? Do they contact you, or you contact them? <laughs> we, we, I'll answer the second one is if someone contacts me about being a special guest I almost want to say no just off the bat if someone says I would like to be a special guest at your con I just want to say no as a matter of course because so, so, if you think you're special I, I don't know how to explain it it just feels <laughs> egotistical no, the truth is the third most important thing we do since we're talking about the most important things is you don't even want to know how much time I spend emailing publishers saying, would you like to come on the cruise? Here's a package. Just include this, this, and this. And this is what kind of publicity you'll get. And this is what kind of this you'll get. And we'd like you to donate a game to the goodie bag. And we and we have different packages. You know, we've done special things like Restoration Games bought the big package. And we, they and Justin and, and went with us from Restoration Games. And we climbed the waterfall in Jamaica. And then the next year... Um, Forbidden Games bought a package and Glenn and Sean from Forbidden Games came with us and we went snorkeling with Stingrays. Well, sure, yeah, but now Stingrays. you're just bragging about what we did on the cruise. The question <laughs> is, how are these sponsors chosen? So we, we go out and recruit sponsors. I mean, it's just like any sales team. You have to go and go to all the sponsors and say, this is what we have. These are the packages and we'd love you to come. And I... Even if I've turned down 20 times, I will keep asking the same sponsor. I know there's know one that. sponsor out there who literally <laughs> always tells me I'm never doing it. I, every year I contact this sponsor and say, maybe one year you'll, you'll be a publisher sponsor. And I'm going to keep bugging him every single year because one year we'll get him to come and people will be really happy that he's there. And to me, it's like we want everyone to come because we want, we want to connect the guests with the publishers. We want to do more. And it's, Really that. Special guests, on the other hand, I guess everyone else could talk about that more because we've only had one special guest ever, and that was Paula Deming last year. Um, besides that, we've never actually had special guests because it costs too much money to bring them on. on well, the that's the thing. So special guests, <laughs> definitely I've had conversations with Tim on this. I've, we've had whole meetings just on this very oh, yes, topic. yes, we have. Yes, we um, have. And it's a really hard thing because you're trying to bring somebody in who's going to bring attention to the con. Um, that people will say, ooh, that person's going, I'm going to go, maybe I'll bump into them, maybe I'll see them, etc. And then you've got to figure out what's the cost of bringing this person in. I always think, will this person bring 
stuff people to the con. So I'm not going to call out negative things, but I want to talk on a positive level. Richard Launius is probably not the world's most famous designer. He is a he designed Arkham Horror and worked in Elder Charter and has done a lot of great games. A lot of people know him, but he's probably not. If people list at the top ten designers, they may not know him from the top ten. But he would easily be he's my in my top choices to bring to a con, because not only does he come to the con gladly. But he'll sit and he'll teach his games and he'll interact with guests and he'll make the guests feel special and marvelous and fantastic. And that adds so much to a con. While if there's another designer, and I'm not thinking of anyone in particular who I'd invite, but they kind of like just show up for a couple hours, maybe sign some autographs and disappear. That's not as helpful to me. No, you're absolutely right, Tom. And the thing about it is it's 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 creating those special moments for your attendees um because special moments are very important because in my past life being in the entertainment world you know when you go to like a circus right that guy in the tightrope almost falls off and dies right you think that he only was going to, that that only happened at the show you were at but i guarantee you Every show he's ever done, he's almost fallen off and died at that same moment because it's creating that special moment that's going to be taken away. And just like you're saying, when Richard Launius is going to spend that time at a table with an attendee, that is a special moment. No matter what happened the entire rest of the con, that attendee is going to take that one special moment and that's going to be a lasting memory. So you're absolutely correct. It, 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 the value comes in what kind of special guest or whatever is going to be able to create more of those special moments for the attendees. One of the Gosh. advantages we have with special guests is sometimes we don't have to worry about bringing in other special guests because the Dice Tower folks themselves are special guests. So we'll have Tom and Z and me and Eric and Mandy and Suzanne and all, all these other people. And one of the things that we make a point is that all of us are going to play games with the attendees. So when you come to a Dice Tower Con, you know you're going to get to play or hopefully you'll get a chance to play with at least one member of the Dice Tower. And we always try to split up as much as possible. And that's one of my mantras is let's split up and play with as many different people as possible um, because they're getting us as a special guest and not a lot of people get to play with it. They watch us on, they watch us on, on videos all the time, but to actually spend time in person with us is a, a lot of people have said it's a very special moment. And I want to give them that every single convention we're at is a chance to interact with us on a real level. And that's very important to what I feel dice, any dice tower event is about. I have an experience I'd like to share with you guys. I, I, I remember I was at a con once and I, and there were some some players were at a at a table, uh, and they were about to play this uh, Elder Sign game. So I was I was in, I was like, oh, I'm kind of like interested in that game. So I they you know they they offered if I wanted to sit and play. I sat down, and um, it turns out that nobody at the table had played the game except for one person who had played it on an iPad. And the problem is that game when you play it on the iPad, like you don't know the rules. But you, like the, a lot of this stuff is done, so you have an idea, but you don't know the rules. So the person opened up, you know, the manual and was literally reading it line by line through the rule book after like 15 minutes. It was so I was it was one of those like situations where I, I wanted to leave. Like I felt bad, but I I was like, oh, this is horrible. You know, it's like it doesn't take forever. And and it's it's a bit complicated. Well, anyway, after some some man walks by and says, um, I, I don't know the person. And he, he said, oh, you guys are uh, do you guys know how to play? And. And we're like, uh, we're learning. He goes, well, I designed the game. So it, and it was Richard Lanius. He had us like up and running. And I, I want to say like, in, he got us to like the first kind of round. And within 10 minutes, we were like, we're good. You know, and I was, I was going to say that that really, he turned like a bad situation into like a really good situation. And I, and I do still remember that. So that's super cool. And there are many other people, I just called him out specifically, there are many great designers who come and publishers who make cons to be a great time. But when yes. I'm picking somebody, I'm thinking about that. I don't want to overwork the people and give them too much to do at a con, but you want them to add something. If I'm bringing someone in just for their name, I'm not interested in that, just for the name. I want those experiences to happen. And Tim's already mentioned this. In fact... Tim brings this up in almost every other meeting he and I talk about. <laughs> so, 
And also, if I'm looking at my screen Tim, properly, Tim is frozen, right? Tim, Tim is frozen. frozen. I think I'm okay. frozen. frozen. We hear you. We don't. You're hear not you. frozen. frozen. I'm gonna unfreeze you, Tim. Hang on. Let me figure okay. it out. You're not frozen on mine. You're not I frozen anymore, see. except now I switched all the names around. Am I moving? <laughs> Are you a robot? <laughs> so did you make it a puzzle where everyone had to figure out who's who now? No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Okay, I got them fixed. All right, lots of people are talking about online cons and stuff, and um, someone disagrees that this is a con. Well, maybe this feels like a con to you, but uh, I, I always feel like, to me, a con has to include open gaming. But that's just me. That's that's, that's my thing here. Um, all right, just a few more minutes, and then we're going to have to move on to the next stuff here. And maybe we'll do something like this again in the future, but I just think it's fun to talk about these. And I think Tim froze again. He oh, did. no. So is it Tim's the connection? fine. Am I? He's fine. Oh. <laughs> now he's definitely frozen. <laughs> okay, he might be frozen you, on, on camera, but I still see him in the, in the Skype call. So he's, well, that's he's true, not yes. frozen to me. All righty. Yes. Well, at least you all can hear Tim as we close out. Um, yes, and let's hope. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe we can talk about this real quick, if, if you don't mind me bringing it up. Like, we still don't know because because uh, the cruise, right, is going to be the first event of the year, and 10 days later is Dice Tower West. But the way things are changing constantly, you know, and that's another thing, like, when people ask questions like, what are some things we have to deal with? This is one right now, right? Because I know Jason's on eggshells. I'm on eggshells because... It, you know, the the barometer or whatever you want to say, the line keeps moving. So it's 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 a little scary. It it is, but it's not. Like I I I find that, you know, as long as I'm working with Royal Caribbean, which I'm on calls with them every single week and I I kind of let the people know once once Royal Caribbean and the C D C come up with full guidelines that we're gonna have more announcements. Um, I can tell you this for sure. We had to cut our room block because they want to make sure there's going to be social distancing because they think even in February they'll they're not going to be sailing at 100 percent on the ship. But we will still be, according to my count, we will be one out of every two and a half people. So basically, I guess about we'll be about two fifths to almost one half of the ship will be our people. But of course, the ship won't have the full capacity of people. So we'll we'll be almost 50% of the people that are allowed on the ship, which is really nice because we'll have a lot more freedom to move around and they'll, they're will they really going to work with us a lot on this. But they won't let our group be a certain size because, so we had to cut back. So we only have a few rooms left, unfortunately. But anyone who gets a room, if for some reason it's canceled, like I said before, they're going to get not only next year's cruise, but they're going to get next year's cruise plus 25% on the cruise in 2023. So they're getting a super deal if they still book, which is amazing. How did this question turn into that again? <laughs> Every question turns into like, the cruise. Sign everything. up for the cruise somehow. I, I want everyone to know how hard I work to get them an awesome deal in case something happens. Because I'm telling you, pandemic. I if you ever told me that there would be this pandemic that would change the whole face of gaming, I would have been like, "No, what are you talking about?" Oh, but no, nobody would have believed it. Nobody would have believed it. We're going to do the best we can, and we're doing everything we can for everyone who who is an attendee because we care about you and I'm going to fight for you every second I can fight for you. All right. Well, let me say this here in closing. I am a firm believer in hard work. I really, I, I, I feel like sometimes I'm lazy and, you know, I push myself to work harder, but the four people that you see sitting here are, are four of the hardest working people I know consistently working. I'm consistently dealing with them to the point where sometimes I pretend my phone's not working. They call me so much. Um, no, it is not only for you. No, I'm kidding. I, but I mean, um, but they all work really hard and they're behind the scenes, you know, and I get the credit and sometimes the blame for when a con goes badly. I'll, t I'll take the blame, but the credit definitely goes to these folks here. There are so many little things, you know, every day Kenny's like, did you think about this? I'm like, I did not, you know, <laughs> I did not think about that at all, you know, and, and these are, there's just, there's always things going on behind the scenes. There's problems with vendors, with people that all have to be taken care of. And I, if I don't say thank you enough, I'm saying it now, at least here publicly, I think you all do a fantastic job. Well, thank you. Thank you. And please, thank I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure that I do mention Dave 
Um, everybody, all you guys know him on the screen, uh, but Dave and I are 50-50 in this. I just happen to be the face, but I just want to make sure that Dave uh, gets the thanks and the credit as well. He's just That's not true. here. So. And, and Kenny, Kenny specifically does, does stuff for every convention. We, we learned all about wheels recently. Yeah. <laughs> we had a whole convention. Because when do we ever wanted to know? <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you, all four of you, for coming on the show tonight. Like I said, we might do something like this in the future. We'll see. Thank you, everyone, for all the questions. Sorry I didn't get to all of them, but I appreciate um, all the questions that we had. We're going to keep going now. Don't forget our um, the uh, the contest. And contest. also, we got another contest and a live play where I'm going to be playing Z, Mike, and Roy remotely. We're going to be playing on the iPad, 8-Minute uh, Empire. But before then, we have some contributors. And here they are. No, they're not. Here they are. Hi, everyone. Anna and Nora. <laughs> We're back. Um, so today we want to do a little bit different than what we normally do because a long, long time ago, a year ago, we made videos, probably most about games that Nora didn't really know how to play because Nora doesn't play that many games. Because who, who are you? <laughs> who am I? Who am I? I'm who Anna's little, little sister and yeah. Sometimes she uh, forces me to uh, play games. No, I, I like playing <laughs> games with Anna. But yeah, we used to make uh, some videos about it last uh, yeah. last year. Yeah, because you you don't you, you would consider yourself, I guess, a casual gamer, and yeah. then gamers maybe even a little bit too yeah. nerdy for what you would call yourself. Yeah, you just like to play games sometimes with me. Yeah, um, and just play it casually, I guess. Right. Yeah. So today we want to make a video, a uh, top five about games that I like to play with Nora as a casual gamer and Nora likes, what kind of games Nora likes to play with me. And uh, so this is mostly a list uh, of games that uh, you can play with a casual gamer and they will probably enjoy it uh, from the views of a player that plays a lot of more heavy games or considers herself a gamer and from someone that does not consider herself a gamer. No. So you get those both, both, both uh, perspectives on the same list. My list is not in a particular order, is your list? No, no. It's no. Not. I like them all. You like them <laughs> in a different way. <laughs> in a different way. <laughs> so let's start. Should I start? Uh, yeah. Okay. So the first game I want to talk about is a love letter. It's probably the game that is the oldest in my collection um, and That's one of the games that was the first game that I actually played with you back back when you were like 15 years old and I guess I was 18 or something like that um, and Ooh, that's a long time ago <laughs> that's a long time ago and uh, when we still lived at home so what I really liked about this game is that it's very easy you can just give someone uh, the overview card and you can play just right away and uh, you have it's a, it's a fast little card game um, so the nice thing about it is when you, as soon as you finish a round you start a new round and a round takes about five minutes I guess. Yeah. I think and every card does max. something a little bit different and your goal is to be the last uh, person standing um, and in a round and thereby score points uh, over multiple rounds. Um, and yeah it's just it's just a fun neat little card yeah. game. Easy yeah. to understand. I. Uh, Played the Batman version at home with my. I uh, live in a student home, so I yeah. uh, prefer Shared to living. play uh, yeah. like quick games, and this is perfect. Yeah, uh, for because your other yeah. other uh, people from your dormitory also enjoy it, right? Uh, yeah, they liked it. Yeah, yeah, a lot actually. Yeah, so that's love letter. Um, my first game is Ticket to Ride. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it's also one of the games we used to play at home. Um, with my mom and I really like this game I think it's a nice family game to play but I also um, played it at home because what you do you make a, a route from A to B well, how do you yeah. say that yeah, yeah. and uh, you do this by collecting cards and certain colors. Uh, yeah yeah of uh, specific colors and making like the combinations and in that way you can make a uh, yeah Gather points to, yeah. for example, from what, Amsterdam to uh, Lisbon or something like, that. something like that. Yeah. I think always the fun thing is when we play with you, you have like all of these different. <laughs> <laughs> something that you really enjoy is that there's no hand limit on this game. No, I love collecting all my cards and then hoarding. I'm playing hoarding your cards, yeah, not hoarding. collecting, it's hoarding, Nora. Just recognize that you have a problem. <laughs> 
Okay, I thought I was uh, making a casual little video, but <laughs> my problems are now. No, I, I love it. It's just you can do your own thing and because of that it's just like you make your own route. But because I always collect everything and think of it beforehand, then I... Um, you don't always, you have to pay your cards and if yeah. you don't get that, you don't have enough trains to make like the route with the train uh, trains, then you don't get the points. So that's always... You have to plan. Yeah, you have, yeah, to, you plan. have to plan. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes you're very lucky, you just get that one, Yeah. you already have the route and you get that card that yeah. already that's already on your route. Yeah. yeah. Then you can just silently be yeah. happy, put the card away. Yeah. Yeah, I like this game and my uh, roommates they also really really like it. Yeah. The parents of uh, one of my roommates she they bought like the she brought it home and then they bought like two other versions of yeah. the game because she, she took one of our copies yeah. or, of our copies yeah. with her, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's how we spread the love of board games, I guess. <laughs> so the next game is going to be a little bit more of on the heavy side because uh, I want to choose some games that were a little bit heavier but that you can also play with a casual gamer I think or at least Nora enjoyed it <laughs> and that is going to be Clank so what I really love about Clank is uh, the fact that it's a little bit of a racing game and that's just so fun and funny actually it's just it's a fun um, and quirky game uh, I really liked the, the fact that you have the dragon um, that is like a little bit like Najini from Harry Potter listening to where you're going because when you make too much noise, it will come after you mm -hmm. uh, and will try to get you. And um, you're trying to get all of the loot or try to get uh, the treasures that the uh, dragon has. And there's a little bit of a push your luck element to that. Because mm -hmm. the farther you go, the more points you will score. But there could be a chance that you don't uh, get back as fast enough and then you score don't score any points at all. Oh. And I know when we played it, you won, right? Yeah, I won. Look at that smug face. Horrible. So, and I think you went for the more points. I was the chicken. Yeah, yeah I was uh, like, how low can you go? <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out well. Yeah, yeah, you worked out well. You scored the most points. Yeah, it was yeah. awful. I'm a, yeah, I'm a very bad loser. I don't like the norms. Aren't we all. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next game you want to talk uh, about? Yes, I, the next game I chose is Azul. Uh, a fun uh, game in which you make. Yeah, uh, I, love it. I said a carpet before, but I think it's a uh, tiles. Yeah, it's tiles. tiles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, you collect little. Um, how do you call them? Tiles. Tiles. Yeah. yeah. Tiles. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, then you make combinations, and by certain combinations you make on your field playing field, uh, you get points. And yeah, I really like this game because it's easy to understand and. Um, it's beautiful. It's it's so pretty. Look at it. Look at that. <laughs> no, yeah, that's it's so pretty. And um, yeah, there are a lot of ways you can make points. So I guess I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can just play it with anyone. Yeah. It's very. Um, it's not. It does not have that kind of theme where people will be immediately put off by it. It just looks very pretty. Yeah. So especially when you're playing with girls, this is a good game to yeah. play. Yeah, we played it at home and they really loved it. They wanted to play it again. So, and in our quick round, so that's uh, yeah. Nice if you want to play a quick game. Yeah. So the next game I want to talk about is uh, the first cooperative game on my list. Yeah. Maybe there are going to be more. I don't know. I don't know. We will see. And that is uh, The Crew. And uh, this is one of the games that I think is the new, one of the newest games that we played. And this one we actually played with my mother. And what I found so funny about it is it's a trick taking game and it's a cooperative trick taking game. But uh, when I explained it to Nora, she was like, I don't know what you're talking about, trick taking game. And my mother immediately went like, ha! Those are the games from my childhood. I know what this is all about. So she immediately got it and for Nora it took a little bit longer. So that's very uh, fun. And because it's a, such a known system, you can play with uh, about anyone that already know, knows trick taking game. And otherwise it's very easy to explain mm -hmm. still, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, the thing about it is you have to make sure that the right people win the right uh, tricks because uh, you have uh, certain mission cards that are the same as the playing cards. And uh, so sometimes you have to, for example, win a yellow nine and you have to be the player that wins that, you have the mission, so you have to be the player that wins that mission. 
Um, and everyone, uh, multiple people have uh, mission cards and you just have to make sure that the right people win the right tricks. Um, it's a very fast game. It's the kind of game where you're just going to start playing and then when the evening continues, yeah. you're just going to play and play. You until can you stop whenever you want. You can stop whenever you want, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you enjoy this? Yeah, a lot. I really liked it. Yeah. Also because you have so many different missions and yeah, yeah so many different, different ways to play, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, it's very diverse. You you would you would think like, how can they make fifty different ver fifty different missions? But they're they're yeah. they're really different. They feel different. Huh? Um, so I think this is a very good game, so a cooperative game to play with your family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my next game. Uh, <laughs> Nora, are you trying to cheat? I couldn't choose. Okay, but they're I'll like let it slide because kind of the same. because you're so enthusiastic about your games. Yay! <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, my next game. As well, I will first explain uh, the quiz. Yeah. Um, for me, yeah, a game we are playing for have been playing for a long time. Yeah. The box is already. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I really like this game. It's you have to um, you have like the dice, and then you make combinations with the uh, you have four colored dice and two white, and then you make combinations with the colored and the uh, normal dice. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the thing is, the the thing is, you want to make uh, as many. Uh, you want to ooh, get rid of as many. Um, Numbers as possible. Yeah. So stripe them, uh, stripe them off. I don't yeah. know how to say. Yeah. Um, and um, because the more things uh, that you uh, got rid of, the more points you're going to score. Yeah. But um, as soon as you cross something off, everything that came before that, uh, you cannot cross off anymore. Yeah. So if you cross a five, you cannot cross like two to four. Uh, yeah. Anymore. <laughs> so you have to really time it. Yeah. And also the thing that you like is uh, that you can play another one's turn, right? Yeah, so what I like about this game is that you don't have to wait for your own turn all the time. You can just, uh, you can use the white or, uh, dice combinations in like the turns of other people. So that's nice because you don't, you aren't like waiting when it's my yeah. turn, you can just keep playing. Yeah, that's just, nice. just keep yeah. fresh and just keeps going. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's just, uh, you can take it anywhere and play it with anyone and yeah. it's easy to play. We actually uh, played this on vacation yeah. when we're in Egypt and yeah. we played it, with, some people had it with them and we just played it on the poolside, they became our yeah. quicks buddies. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, you have Gunshin Clever, that's like, yeah, an upgraded Or Clever in America, I yeah. think it's called. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a different, yeah, like a more complex version of Quicks, I think. But yeah. like every dice has its own uh, role. Yeah, or yeah, you can own use it. Are you way to score, way, own to, way score. to score. Yeah. So the next game I want to talk about is a two-player game. Two-player game where you have to make a quilt. Uh, and I really like this game also because it was one of the first games that had a theme that was more suitable also for women, I guess. Uh, because sometimes it can be a little bit hard to get my girlfriends to uh, uh, like a game because of all the dragons and stuff like that. So my more casual girlfriends, they're like, no, I don't want to play with that, but I do want to make a quilt. Um, so. Uh, Nora is also actually pretty good at this game uh, because we both really like games where we can make our own little thing and in this game you're going to play these Tetris like pieces to make your quilt and you of course don't want it to look ugly and sometimes the thing we really really hate is when things don't match <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes it just happens that we play this game more cooperatively and be like Nora don't you want to have this piece oh no it doesn't matter I will go to the next <laughs> Because we just want to make sure that we get a pretty quilt for the both of us. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a little bit off track. <laughs> Back on the game. Um, I think this is a very excellent two-player game. Uh, it plays very quickly. And um, I also played it with my, with my mother. Uh, and she got it as well. She whooped my ass. It was like three weeks ago, I think. Um, yeah, she, she's very evil when she wins. She will be I like... I don't get it. Why? Oh, what, what is this game about? I won. <laughs> and now I won. It's awful, um, but she, she really would my ass. Um, um, yeah, we, we love you, mom. Let's work. Uh, my next game is Pandemic. <laughs> uh, also cooperative game, yeah. right? Yeah. 
And uh, <laughs> I'm using the real one. The, 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 the real terms now. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is the. I don't know if it's the first, but one of the first. Yeah, this, this is the yeah. deluxe edition, but this is the original. Yeah. No, cooperative games. I'm playing. I'm oh, playing, the yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, you save the world from a pandemic because uh, yeah. It has, it has out. to be safe. <laughs> yeah, someone has to do it. Has broken out. <laughs> and yeah, I know Anna and Peter were playing it. Like uh, they were talking about it a lot, and I was always like, "Nah, it sounds difficult. I don't want to play it." But then actually, when I played it, it was actually Wasn't that yeah, it was easy to understand. And uh, you have like the rules yeah, in front of you, or yeah. like the steps. So yeah, I. Uh, I really liked it actually. Yeah, what do you think of the different roles? Yeah, I love it. It's yeah. uh, fun because you have like your own role and then you can be like good in your, your yeah, own weapon. thing. Yeah. yeah, so it's like you really have a purpose. It's not. Yeah, yeah it's also for a new player, I think, a good thing to focus yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. I'm good in this thing, so I'm gonna do yeah. this thing. And now. because it is like co cooperative, uh, you can. Uh, they, you, they will help you in the beginning, so we'll be like, what's the best thing to do? And I like yeah. that a lot because it's... Uh, and the theme is just great. Yeah, it's yeah. so much fun. The last game I, I wanted to share is also a cooperative game. And you just said that this was your first cooperative yeah, game. I, well, think I don't think so. Question. I think this one is the yeah. first one. And that is a Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. So both Nora and I, we are huge Harry Potter uh, nerds. Actually, the only tattoo that I have is uh, of Harry Potter because I really, really love the books. Uh, and this game, when, as soon as I got it, I was like, this is going to be fun to play with Nora because um, this is like introduction to deck building and I really love deck building. Of course, Clank that I showed you earlier is a little bit more difficult, but this will explain you. It starts at the very basics of deck building and um, every year in the books, of course, so it's seven years, every year is one uh, game. And every in every game or in every next year, new rules are um, there are new rules to teach. So with those new rules, you can slowly learn everything that is about deck building. It gets uh, just adds on that difficulty. And um, I think for people that play more games, at the beginning is it's too it's a little bit too easy. It has not enough meat. But because of that, it is perfect to play. Uh, was perfect to play with Nora because it was more a slow introduction yeah. and normally campaign games can be quite overwhelming and I think this one was not because no, of that. No, not at all. No, I had really had the idea that I knew what I had to do and what I was doing, so... Yeah, yeah. and what do you, do you, did you think, what do you think of the team theme? Was that incorporated correctly? Yeah, yeah, I think did so. Did you feel yeah. like... Yeah, I was in the Harry Potter world, not, not wearing that. Well, who, like... who were you playing again? Uh, Hermione. Hermione. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were... Harry Potter? No, I mean, no one played Harry. Ex actually, oh. we played Ron yeah. and Neville. Neville, Neville, yeah. No, it was fun because you had your own role as well, so your own things to focus on. And for yeah. me, it was really spells. I had I no think, feeling of being overwhelmed or anything. I can imagine that it's maybe a bit too well, not too easy, but like at yeah. the beginning, we didn't have a lot of difficulty beating the yeah thing. except for the later ones yeah those took a little they bit longer were, yeah yeah so but you really have to plan it because this is i think the first also game that, I, that we like played like a campaign of. yeah so yeah. it was for me it was also a little bit anxious because no one's gonna like it because this is really a game 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 yeah and not something to be like after dinner let's play a yeah. game there's something that you really plan for uh, so i was very happy to notice that she really enjoyed it yeah, but it was also fun because I knew that we were tonight we were gonna do Harry Potter. You know, it's just not oh we're gonna play a random yeah. game. No, we have to finish it. We have to finish it. We have to, <laughs> need to go to World Seven, beat Voldemort. So that's going to be Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. What's your last game gonna be, Nora? Uh, my last game is just one. Uh, also, a very new game. You spiel des Jahres. Yeah, so spiel, spiel des Jahres, Jahres Nina. Uh, 2019. 2019? <laughs> a little bit of German. Yes, hey, international. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I know when Anna introduced this game, I was like, oh, sounds a little like uh, games that already exist. Uh, bit, yeah, bit I get easy. what you mean. Yeah, but it's, uh, it surprised me a lot because it's, uh, yeah, it's a game in which you have to, one person uh, has to guess a word, and actually you're also working together, so it's yeah. also a cooperative game. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you, ch you choose one of the uh, numbers and then only the others see the word you uh, chose and yeah. they have to like 
uh, yeah. Just one, yeah. just one hint. Write write down one hint in which you, from which you have to guess the word. And if they write down the same hint, then they can't use it anymore. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's, it's an interesting thing is you have to think about something that's a little bit out of the box, but not too out of the box because then everyone's going to be like, yeah, what are you talking about this? Yeah. You're weird. <laughs> so you do need those a little bit more um, logical hints. Yeah. Or clues, I have to say. Um, but not too many because then you will have the same ones. You have, you, you have the risk of having the same ones and then you cannot uh, give those hints. Yeah. Uh, so it's important to get that balance. Yeah. It's really like a more party game kind yeah. of uh, vibe. But have you played this with your roommates? Yeah. Dormitory? Yeah, no, we played it uh, uh, here, but my um, room, one room, I took it to her friends, and I do have to say, they, <laughs> those friends were like, "Where is the? Well, how do I win?" <laughs> because it's like cooperative, and they were like, "Ah, I want to beat someone," and uh, so yeah. I think, like, even if you, yeah, if you don't really know the concept, and and it's uh, not really normal. I also to brought it to other it. friends, and they also said like, "Ah, oh, how do I? Where's the, I missed the competition part?" So. It's more like a game you play uh, together or relax. Yeah, it's so. casual with a yeah. little bit of wine in your back yeah. garden, yeah. on the beach, something like that. And you can bring it everywhere. And uh... and it's also nice because it plays with a lot more people. Yeah, you can play with up to seven people. And yeah, it's, uh, it's fun because everyone has its own imp interpretation of words and then you can laugh because someone wrote down something totally different than you <laughs> would, would you thought of. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what are you thinking? How does yeah. that match? Yeah. <laughs> That's very fun. Yeah. So those are the games that 10 or 11 games uh, that we want to talk about. What kind of games do you uh, like to play with your casual gamer friends? Uh, just leave down some comments below and we're excited to hear what you like to play. And it was fun to do this again with you. Yeah, game. I loved it. Missed it. Yeah, I missed it too. <laughs> it was nice to have you back. Yeah. Uh, so have a nice gaming day, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey there everyone, it's Jen, the Board Game Librarian. Today I'm going to take a look at some of my favorite games that take place in libraries. What a surprise, right? You're wondering, oh gee, Jen, why would you do that? And I'm being totally meta and filming it in the teen section of a library that I work at. Woo! Uh, so the first one that I'm going to take a look at is Fire in the Library, Tony Miller, John Prather. Uh, this is Weird Giraffe Games, ages 8 and up, 30 minutes, 1 to 6 players. This is a wonderful gateway style um, push your luck game where you are, um, there is a fire in the library and you are attempting to save different types of literature and um, make your way out of the library as well. Uh, what I love about this game is again the push your luck aspect where you can keep drawing into the bag and go, oh, well, should I keep going? Should I not? Now, as a librarian, I would totally be like, how many more books can I save? Because that's all we want to do, really. And a legit fact about this library is that there was a fire uh, for the Manchester Public Library back in the 1910s, 1920s, and the librarians and the school next door, the children, went into the library and formed like this conga line of sorts and saved all the books very cool. Um, we don't want that happening here though. No, that would not be good. Um, so I really like this one a lot. Um, it's fire is threatening all the knowledge. So I think it's a really great call to action too in this game. And um, you know, the packaging is super adorable and the components are wonderful. Artwork by the wonderful Beth Sobel. Great one for families and as an inter introductory game. So fire seems to be a common theme in libraries. I don't know why with games. Uh, this one, Alexandria, a library in cinders, a game designed by Babas Giannos, Ludi Creations, and illustrations by one of my favorites, Vincent Dutrait. So here again, we have a 
Library on fire? Other things do happen in libraries, that is true. In Alexandria, a library in Cinders, you are different characters looking to save as much knowledge as possible from the Library of Alexandria as it burns to the ground. Uh, sometimes your motives are pure, sometimes your motives are not as pure, uh, but what the cool thing about this game is that the player, uh, the boards are shrinking as the rounds go on. What I like about this one as well that is different from Fire in the Library is that you have individual player powers and different actions that you can do that are unique to you. I love the artwork in this game as well, the components. This is um, another one that's maybe a step up from Fire in the Library and um, a very fun, fun play. Now finally a game where nothing's on fire, no one's burning, the books are fine, is Ex Libris, a Renegade Games, Adam P. McIver, one to four players, and a variable time on that. Uh, Ex Libris <laughs> really speaks to me as a librarian because what you are attempting to do is to put all of your cards in order. You're putting them on the, these cards on a shelf and they have to be in alphabetical and numerical order. That's literally all I do all day long, right? Um, it, it's set in this delightful fantasy universe. You have individual player powers as well. Everyone wants to play as so the gelatinous cube. And I wish there were more games in the Ex Libris universe. I think it has a lot of potential. Everyone always talks about the puns and how punny the book titles are. And it's my favorite of the bunch. I think it has a lot of replayability in it as well in terms of um, how you can build your shelves and uh, with the different player boards. So have you played any other games that are about libraries? Libraries are the focus. Let me know in the comments below. That is all for this week. Hey everybody! Welcome! I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hi. I'm Mike Leach. Hey there. Air. You know what, Roy? You don't know how to count to five seconds, so you're last. That timer <laughs> was off. Off. Oh. Alrighty. Let me find here. Alrighty. I am not hearing the iPad at all, but I'm seeing it's making noise, so that's good. Okay. We're playing 8-Minute Empire from Ryan Lockett and Red Raven Games. So since we're on that subject, this is the last thing of today. We'll be back in less than 12 hours with Board Game Breakfast Spectacular tomorrow morning with an announcement of a new game from a company. So you definitely want to come back for that. But right now we're giving out four prizes. These are the four last prizes of the day. Um, yeah. Two copies of 8-Minute Empire on the iOS and two copies on Steam. So you can oh, get man, these I, I need by, to get that. <laughs> by emailing <laughs> us at contest.dicetower.com and put in the description, I mean, in the subject line, put just the number eight for 8-Minute Empire. And then in the subject, mm. put your name and what you want, iOS or Steam. And we'll pick two winners and we will... Um, Give those out. We'll put a list on our website tomorrow of who won. So email us at contest at dicetower.com and put eight as your description. All right. So we're playing Eight Minute Empire. This will probably take more than eight minutes because some people here talk a lot. But I think there might actually be a timer in this what? game. Let me look at the settings oh. here. I say you start, if possible, to seven minutes. And if anything takes longer than that, they're timed out. Seven Minute Empire. I like it. Seven minute turn empire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm going to make a new room okay. here. We're going to play right. in the ancient kingdom first. Four players. Synchronous game. I'm purple. And we're starting. Oh. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> That's all right. Look, I, I defer. I defer. And here we go. All right, so mm. bidding. So this is the kind of game, folks, you're going to learn as you watch. Basically, you get points for controlling each area, and you get points for controlling the larger overall regions. 
And you also get points for having groups of different items. But we're bidding to go first, so I'm going to put my bid in here. I bid. Everyone's going to bid. Oh, I missed what Tom bid. Oh, goodness. Does it say well, what we people bid? Well, we all bid simultaneously. No, I, I, can, I can see your yeah. thing in delay on the YouTube. Oh, no! Oh, I'm no, not, you cheater! I'm not look I'm not looking on YouTube. I'm 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 being fair. Mike Delisio has won the bidding. I did. Am I going oh. last? Wow. That's what okay. cheaters get. All right. So Mike's gonna pick a card at the bottom of the screen. That 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 card will cost a certain amount of money. You only have so much money for the whole game. That card will give you a resource mm. where you're collecting sets, and it will also give you an action. Those actions can be recruiting new people to your castles building castles, or moving your guys around the board. Mm-hmm. You don't so, have to um, go first, technically. You don't have to pick right. yourself as the first player, but... But only a fool would not pick themselves as a first player. Or, or somebody who knows how I to pick play. <laughs> you know, I like trees. Uh, I like trees a lot. So you I'm going to get myself out. a tree... We're moving on out. Look at that. I control this continent. Boom. All right. Cute. I felt pretty good about it. That is a pretty good opening move. So, Mike, Where's this chat happening? I'm so confused. I'm seeing, like, chat in the YouTube stream. Um, what is happening? Um, I shall ignore it. I'm not even going into YouTube. I'm focused completely on this 8-Minute Empire game. Mike is winning currently with four points. He controls three oh, regions, yeah. it's just and he controls the entire continent. Z has been okay. completely flummoxed by the fact that chat exists. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> and trees. Several people Mike have picked Z for the win. Trees. A few have picked Mike. One or two picked Roy, and yes. no one picked me. All right. I'm not going to win. I just want to state for the record that I am really bad at this game. Yeah, but Z, so. you said you weren't going to win that right Terraforming here. Mars game, and then you whooped everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Z, you can get in on the tree action, too. It's only going to cost I lied, three folks. Coins. Apparently, this is 80-minute Empire. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I realized uh, I turned off the little hints, and I, I don't want those off. I probably want those on. Ugh. Prompt came up that said, turn it off. I played I played a couple of times earlier today, and the prompts are nice, but... Yeah. Turn those back on if, for, for the next one. I see the Z is the only one that didn't go with the last name. He's just like Cher or Madonna. He doesn't need a last name. It's just Z. That's all you need. Look at that, guys. I took that top area. That's what? mine. Everybody knows that, that that's uh, the lamest of, of provinces. That's the tower. Is... The dice tower. I'm not even sure how you got over there. I got a five mover. I ran a guy there. He just kept running like, like a maniac. Uh, and you know, I that ran. Point. I was I thinking ran. the same thing. <laughs> a flock of carrots. I'm going to uh, set voyage oh, oh. to Ooh, new lands. lands. That it was pretty good. Turn. But you picked a carrot card, and carrot cards, you need three of those to get a point. Mm. Listen, don't be talking about my carrots like that. That mm. sounded weird. Let's see. Well, I think... I think it behooves me to build a city. Uh -huh. How did you build the city? What did you build it on? I, I built it on rock and roll, Tom. That will be easy and to destroy, then. I'll just unplug your amplifier. <laughs> Got it. You're going to need to bring your starship. I don't like your move, Roy. Why? Yeah, he's all alone out there. No one's paying attention to the green continent. What are you talking about? I just mentioned it. But the green continent, too. You guys Ooh, are in, Z's in everyone's face. 
I'm a, I'm just gonna run around getting your faces. Be like, oh, you want to control this this uh, beautiful landscape? Denied. <laughs> I'm gonna be a squatter in this game, just like hang out on your lands. Oh, this is your castle. It's a nice castle. I'm moving in. I added some now. more troops to the mainland. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is my turn. It you appears to be my turn. We'll easily be able to overcome you. So really, folks, that's What's all we're doing. Is we're just we're, there's eight <laughs> turns in the game. You draw a card, and then you do it. So it's like a very tight area control game. I'm mm. going to go for wild resource because you know wild resource can be anything. That's it can be like wild. That's wild. It's going to be a carrot. Stay out it's of my carrot. It's not going to be a carrot because it's not going to be the only thing I get the entire game. Oh, they That'll made be it silly. They made it a diamond for you. Yeah. So I'm looking at the scores. So Roy has four, Mike has three, I have three, and Z has two. All right. That means that means I'm winning. Yes. Yes. All right. Oh, there's a two carat card. I don't want to startle you, gentlemen, but there's a two carat card in play. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's a good card, though. Actually, that's two carrots and three. I hear two three. carrots. I think diamond. Spent like all of your coins already. Like what in the world? You're hey. already, already down to four. Hey. Like, you're not the barely into me. Yeah, that's not I, a good I, play, Mike. That's what did you say Look, to me, Mike? I see what I like, and I'm willing to pay for it. How about that? I'm not going to be confined by things like money. I like. <laughs> I like. Right, well. And if you pl play your cards right, you don't have to pay for carrots. Mm. <laughs> this is all not really something that you can defend again. You know, it's true. He's not wrong. Right. It's largely nonsensical, but it's not sure. really wrong. Woo! Uh. I just took over the land, everybody. Mm -hmm. Not a fan yeah, of that. All right, let's see. Z, Z is low key sniping this from us with this yellow thing going on down here. I don't know what you, you're talking about. He only about. has four points. Oh, I'm aware. Oh, I just went that, up to seven. The last one. Shh. Why is everyone saying really, shh? We are literally really. playing this game in front of hundreds Tom. of people. <laughs> no one can see what's happening. <laughs> uh. Mike, why Who's is your character there? falling asleep? Take your turn. Hey. This I like is, Mike's uh, character the most. I like the business. animation in that guy. Yeah. Right. It's a serious business Ooh. here. I believe it's carrot time. <laughs> <laughs> go carrot for the cake? double carrot. Why go for one carrot when you can get two? Oh, he's going with the single carrot. The bold oh, choice. This is a double a bad carrot. Choice. costs money. It's buy one carrot for free. Get the second carrot for one? No. No, that doesn't make sense. That's, that's, just, that's bad economics. It is. Oh, Looks like right. Tom's Thomas. only controlling two two lands, but that can't be right. Tom, you're spending those big bucks, babe. Yeah, I'm sorry, what he you really saying? wants this I, can't, I gotta do it. I don't want to do it, but I gotta do it. Gotta do, do it. Do you gotta do it? You gotta do double carrot. No, I don't want the double carrot. What? What's that worth? <laughs> Take the double right. carrot. Leave the double Seriously. carrot for me for zero coins, Roy. You know I'm gonna take it if you don't. Oh yeah, but oh no, you didn't know it's not. It doesn't go down quiet. unless someone takes that piece of garbage at the beginning. I'm considering taking that piece of garbage at the beginning, mostly because I'm not sure I have many choices. Um, no. This is happening right here. It just carrot happened. Time. That, that just carrot, double happened. Double carrot. Double carrot. All right. Um. Mm. Mm-hmm. You gonna make a carrot cake with Ooh. all your carrots? Ooh, carrot cake. Dang. You speak with the devil's tongue. Mm -hmm. Carrot cake is carrot cake is a lie. Come on now, that's not a real thing. Hmm. <laughs> What are you? Are you talking trash right, about carrot see. cake? 
Carry all anyone needs carrot cake for is the frosting. You could put that cream cheese frosting on a brick and people would be excited about it. I, I hate to argue with Mike, but I, so I won't because you're right. <laughs> Mike, you you're know, right. you're speaking so much garbage, I just kill you, dude. No! Boom! That's that seems to be fair, Mike. If he hadn't killed your dude, I would have. Oh, <laughs> I feel uh, targeted here. I'm just a carrot farmer. I'm a simple carrot farmer with simple tastes. I'm I don't understand why all bill. the hatred. Now all I can think about is literally carrot cake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is. You've you've triggered me, Roy. I am triggered. Mm -hmm. I'm. Sorry. Why would it be open right now where I could buy an entire carrot cake? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Let me think. Let me ask this: Someone just Kabuki Kid said, if you have the right kind of carrot cake, it's delicious aside from the frosting. I call foul on that. They don't sell no. carrot cake without the frosting. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know what, what tastes good mean? without any frosting? Cheesecake. Cheesecake doesn't need frosting. Carrot cake definitely needs frosting. You're picking something that doesn't normally come with frosting. With frosting? I would, if they made cheesecake with frosting, I'd eat it. Well, Tom, you realize you have the ability to make cheesecake with frosting. You, I have the you ability don't need to not eat to make sweets. I'm not eating sweets. Mm. You, you know That's what? I don't true. need this kind of judgment, Tom. Guess who's next to get killed? In this game, mind you, in this game. Unless you have Roy, carrot cake. Roy has 12 points. I hope you're looking at the point totals. I don't keep track of these things. I, That's why I'm helping I, you. I let carrot cake guide me. <laughs> All of my moral choices are based on the availability of carrot cake. <laughs> what the? This Let's was more fun against the computer. I'm trying to. I thought I was. I thought I was done. Apparently not. I got a lot of moves here. That's why there's here. a check mark there. I'm aware. Just press the check mark. Skip the rest of your turns. I'm disoriented by all this talk of carrot cake. Here no. we go. Here we go. How do me? And How did Roy get 12 points? Could because he took that island down there. He thinks no one notices. Should have known not to play a game with Roy that has uh, air, land, and sea involved. <laughs> There's no air involved. Come on. Have you, there... What are these people breathing, Roy? They're not breathing carrot cake. Air. Ooh. Air. air. They can breathe infallible. whatever they want to breathe. That is infallible 9.42 p.m. logic. <laughs> Do they make carrot cake scented air? Hmm. <laughs> they should make carrot. They, I think they have carrot cake scented candles. What am I gonna do with that, Mike? That's like slow torture, <laughs> right? <laughs> air. I unlock some sort of achievement. It said oh, that's day. nice. I don't even know what that means. What mm -hmm. did it say? I think it said half dozen. You spent all your money. That's true. I did spend all my money. It's Ooh, glowing in did? red. Oof. Is it glowing in red for you guys? Yeah. No. no. For you. Yeah. It, yeah. We for see you. It. It's glowing red. Yes. Yep. Uh, uh, decisions. Decisions. I don't even don't even want to do that, but I kind of do. I'm doing particularly <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah. Par for the course. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> Roy's winning. Cool. Yeah, Roy is winning pretty soundly. I can stop. I have to scroll to see everyone's score, but I can actually stop scrolling up to see Mike's. I'm realizing I don't really need to worry about it anymore. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm really not a consideration at this point. You can also um, collapse everybody's... Z, if you click on their thing, you can collapse it. You don't need to see the, the stuff they're collecting. Aha! Uh -huh. Fantastic, thank you. You should probably look How at what am you're I not winning this? I've got like 75 troops. Okay, How am I not winning this continent? Like... Mm -hmm. Maybe you stuck all your troops in that one area no one cares about. I did, but I, I, I was trying to move, but I can't seem to get sea movement. 
There's very few seed movement cards. They're pretty valuable. Yeah, I'm figuring that out. Huh. How is Roy huh. winning, says somebody? Because Roy wins all the games. What are you talking yeah, he, about? He basically wins everything. He That's beats not Jason. Even true. I used up all of my good That's luck earlier today in Gloomhaven. That's my issue. <laughs> Flipping that card. How did that That's go? I wasn't watching you guys. How did that go? Terrible somehow, for them. Somehow my <laughs> deck... <laughs> Somehow my deck of attack modifiers ended up with 15 negative cards that, that do nothing. I, there's only two in the deck, but every time I flipped it over, it was one of them. It wasn't like, like pretty. People in the chat were saying, roll on the floor laughing, but like I was literally rolling on the floor laughing. And I, I agree. It was uncontrollable. I'm sorry. Mike Smith's I, fortune is hilarious. I single-handedly disproved the idea of there Tom, being probability. So probability doesn't cards. exist. It's a myth. Probability it is, a, is myth. a myth. Right. Oh, looks like I can kill somebody. Is that Roy's <sighs> turn? It's my, my turn. No, looks like Roy can kill somebody. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking about what I want to do to Beth why? Wow. You know why. Uh, really. Let's see here. Hmm. Let's just do this. Take that! Mm -hmm. Who got killed? Oh, I what wonder the who got killed. Yeah, baby. Murder. Murder most Bang. wow. I'll be speaking to Mr. Lockett for allowing this stuff in games. <laughs> is this the last uh, round? This is the yeah, final the last round round. now. Last round. Roy's it's winning. Final round. Yes, come on, Mike. It's up to you to stop Roy. <laughs> that's not that's not happening. I got a crisp dollar in my pocket that says it is. How is it crisp and a in your pocket? Deduction! <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> My money's gone. Uh, yes, elementary. Oh, it's on the table. <laughs> yes, take more of Vassal's points. <laughs> Did you attack me, go. Delicio? Do... The I had no... I had no choice. I had to move. Kingmaker. Look, Kingmaker. King I had to move. Maker. Roy doesn't um, need help. I'm okay with these choices. I'm okay with these choices, Z. There was nothing I could do to Roy. I wasn't in a position to. Mr. Dreadful said, Z, it's like you don't care at all. I uh, saw it. <laughs> Good stuff. Man. Hey, have fun building that castle with a carrot, Tom. You know what? You could do with that carrot. Never mind. You can, you can put <laughs> that carrot with all the rest of the carrots you've collected this game. Which is none of them. We built this city on Roy, you can just pass and win. Cake. I will not do such things. I will build another ore thing, because I really need to hold this diamond in the sun. <laughs> Got 11 dudes just sitting there. <laughs> wow. All right, congratulations I know, to I Roy. I didn't get a chance to move him out. I'm second place, Tom. You seeing this? In your face! <laughs> I'm seeing it, but I beat Mike. Oh, yeah, but that's not much of an accomplishment. All right. All right. Let's play the next map. Do we just press start again or not? We just go home. Go to the home, right? And then find another online game. Uh, now we're gonna play, that was Ancient Abandoned. Kingdom. Now we're going to play Sister Continents. Are we going right. home? Then he's just not listening, like at all. They answered you. It's like he's got carrot cake stuff. They in his answered ear holes. you. Why should I repeat it? Okay. Roy's there. These people I listen to, Boom. my boss, not these peasants. Hey, Mike, I think you <laughs> should bid all of your coins. The the Let's do it. I only okay, bid really, two I coins. I don't know how to do this. 
go to the home or go go back to the um you'll see open rooms in the online area it's the sister continents room got it got it uh it only has me best color thanks thanks chicago twilight it only has me as ready to play what's going on Uh oh Maybe you're in the wrong room. Do you, see Tom, do you see Tom Vassell's room? Yeah. It says Sister Continents. No, it says Ancient Kingdom. Oh, that's the wrong one. Look up at, you'll see up at the top, there's a tab. There's a tab that says something like Open Rooms or something like that. It's not there. It's not in the oh. list. Back out. Go back, yeah, back go out. To We're abandoning this. Oh, this you're, why you're I, wrong. You guys don't it. answer, Mike. Wait, wait, I think I found it. He's oh, you Tom. can't! We already You're left! Right here. Oh, come on, nope. man! <laughs> All right, let's start the game with three people. Without Tom. I'm back in. All right, Tom, I'm going to take the room, Tom. Yeah, we're all in. Am I supposed to go in now? You're no, already I, in. I've started a brand new game. Oh! No, okay, I didn't. Okay. No, this don't one's join deep. yet. No, don't join that one. <laughs> What are you doing Why to me? Not? Which one should I join? Okay. I'm joining in whatever this is. No, no don't! You... Okay. I haven't started it yet. Okay, I just started. It's called ZZZZZ. Got it! <laughs> I'm just going to start playing in Michael's room. Whoever's room this is, he's been waiting for people to come in this game for a long time. Yeah. Uh... Okay, Roy Kennedy is considering joining us. Right, oh, right. Let me, he says let me he, think. he has considered. Oh, oh, this is a whole new world. Oh, oh, nice. oh. Wait, this is the same one. No, it's not. No. no, it's not. This has a distinct lack Mike of Mike won the bidding. Again. Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> I didn't bid anything. <laughs> no one else None did either. Bid anything. <laughs> Everybody bid zero. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Um, sure. I'll go first. You don't have a choice. Man. Yes, you yeah, can. you can. You can pick other people to go first. I'll, I'll take that double carrot. Three recruit. Well, sure. you seriously went with the double carrots over the diamond. It was, it was free. Yeah, it makes, makes no sense. Wow. Make... Who's second? Yeah, the diamond Just was gives done. the points there, uh, Mike. It should have been done. Look, if I, I win, never claimed to be good. It was thanks to Mike. <laughs> That's the truth of it. I may or may not have just caught on that the gems are more valuable than the other ones. Yeah, the number of dashes. Uh, I see face. that now. I see that now that you've all given me about picking a double carrot, which is only one third less good than a gem. Yes, yeah, uh, that's uh, look how many dashes there are in the rest of the thing. Roy, that doesn't have any dashes. Roy, there's no need to sprinkle carrot cake in his wounds. <laughs> what? <laughs> Z, you didn't see how badly Mike played uh, in Gloomhaven. Ah. Uh, I, I want to just point out that I was the last person standing in Gloomhaven, yeah. Tom. You were you were laying a lifeless corpse on the ground. I took out half the people in the room. room. And I wasn't lifeless. I was resting. Oh, okay. <laughs> you were basically a speed bump for them to jump over before they killed me. Just do this. Roy's taking Let's get a dodge. I left town. All right. Now that I realize the carrots are not terribly valuable. Um, you take more carrots. <laughs> you shut your trap. All right. Um, gosh, do I really, really want to? Boy, that was a really good opening move. No. Nah, something... nah. Last time, all my dudes got stuck in one spot because the movement things disappeared like so quick. I'm like, I gotta get out of the 
Starting space. Let's go. Man, I Man, really hate that I'm taking a card quick, just to stop Roy. Just... That's, That's sick right. of me. Do it. Do it. Oh, I can't even take that Do card. It. Ah. What can't you take it, Tom? You can afford anything you want. You can no, do it. No, I just can't build it. Oh, no, you can't build it. No. If I build it, I like it. He will come. Why are you trying no to hate draft? draft if you build it, no one's going to show hate drafting. Roy's, you know I'm Roy's going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. Roy's I getting really a free, build people, but... free city. Hate drafting! You hate drafted that? <laughs> oh my goodness! You really did. So silly. That's none fine. of the other cards were good for me. That's amazing, that's Tom. True. You hate drafted that. You're an animal. <laughs> it's the first time anyone in this game has ever hate drafted. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. There's no way I'm letting Roy build a castle over there and then just take over that whole continent. That is quite... That's, that's very juicy over there. That's not hate drafting. That's called smirks. Smirks? I'm being yeah, smart. Yeah, because that hurts. <laughs> smarts. It's being smart and you hurt at the same time. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What was all that, Mr. Delicio? Can't you Look. take a hint? That's my continent. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go over the sea, but I can't find these sea cards. They're just very hard to get. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. We won't mm -hmm. talk about it. Whose turn is it? Who's going so slow? What are you talking about? I'm not going slowly at all. Woo, we took another diamond. Yeah, I'm jealous of that. I could. I heard diamonds were um, were good. <laughs> they're forever. They're forever. Ah, they're, look at that. That was nice. Those are not they're diamonds, the guys. Friend. Those are emeralds. Hmm. Emeralds are forever. Rubies? Aren't emeralds a different? Never mind. Man, Hello, boys. Boys. Sapphires. I've oh, come to visit no, you. Tom spent too. Right. But then you All left. Right. You came and you left. That was to me. Uh, that island wasn't big enough for the two mind, of us. Tom, you're hot and you're cold. You come and you go. Bill Castle and this. steel. You hate draft and root. You take the cards that Roy wants. He's so sad. <laughs> Yet he'll still win. Because yeah, he got it anyway. We're so bad. All right. Because you're oh, oh. bad and you're good, you. <laughs> what is going on? We're singing. It's late at night. It's not this that late for you. Impromptu karaoke. I've been up since. Yeah. About eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not losing. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. That's super rude. You. Why did you come up know. into my land? Can. Why did you do that? Doesn't look like your land to me. I mean, for, to, to my eyes, it looks like this it's land our is land. my land. This land ain't uh, your land. Um, to my island. What is going on? Who's going? Oh, it's your you. turn. Yeah, you. <laughs> if you have to ask. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. Look at, that, look at that lonely carrot in the zero spot. Come on. Oh, this is garbage. This is straight, hot, filthy garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Take those horrible cars. Suffer. Okay, I'll do that. Yes. 
Oh, Man, three coins. He's gonna be three wrecked with coins. coins I figured I better spend that money. It's spending uh, money. Oh, this is terrible, 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 terrible. I have assimilated this game. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of the that fastest sling frontier, blade. my score Fire reflects game. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike Delisa still has three points. You're good. <laughs> hey, comparing me to Mike is not something that makes me happy. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm really aware. particularly enjoying the direction this discussion is headed. Let me bring it down for you, Mike. The insinuation <laughs> seems to be you're bad at games. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure I understood. All right. Um, hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm going to take that comment. And there's nothing you can do about it. How come Z is winning? Let's not let Z keep the other continent. I'm not worried about what Z's doing. He's focused on carrot cake. Mike, you're just like this wanderer. Who just jumps from continent to continent? You're never happy where you land. You're a vagrant. No. <laughs> Wherever I may roam. <laughs> vagrant? You mean a. <laughs> I think you mean a. a what's that word? Shoot. A, big a wanderer. Now. A wanderer, a nomad. 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 Yeah. Yes. I was going to say yeah. bag of bomb. Bag of bomb. Bag of bomb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're basically, um, you move a lot and your hygiene is subpar. <laughs> That's what Tom was trying to say. I believe it is, what are you saying, yes. All the shit come over here. The only here. thing Get worse than your hygiene is your strategy. That's <laughs> a... that, Im that implies that I have a strategy, sir. And frankly, okay. I'm offended by the implication. So you're more upset about the strategy you think than the hygiene thing. I know, right? That's what he's focusing on. <laughs> I, I may or may not be sitting in an in, un air conditioned room and it's about 97 degrees. So hygiene. What y'all don't I know is that we're, we're all here. I Without my hat, I'm kind of scruffy. Roy is, yeah, you can see his hair. Z doesn't have any. What? And Mike sits around the studio going, my hair is out of control. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> It's like perfectly in place. He's like, oh, I feel like a savage. <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed by the hair situation. It's not good. Oh. Ooh. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm wow. setting up for the long game. This is the long game I've got going on right here. I really like sitting yes. after Mike, I have to say. I love sitting after Mike <laughs> in this game. He's, I really am not good there. at this game. Man, Z's wrecking us now. He is so wrecking us. I'm, I'm sorry like I hate drafting you, like Roy. A, I should have hate drafted Z. Mike, that was ridiculous. Why did that you not hate draft that card? Uh, yeah. I it's going to be hard to catch it. up. I take back everything I said about your hygiene, Mike. You're a wonderful, clean man. <laughs> uh, I really have just like a scorched earth policy going on over here. If I, I, I know I can't. I'm just going to burn it all down. <laughs> Go stand in the same spots as these characters. Don't do that. That's me. <sighs> Right. The Roy is out of that money. Shh, shh. I'm not going to talk about that, that right now. Gang. It does glow red on other people's screens. You told me it didn't. I said it did. I said it does. Yeah. You don't listen very well, Tom. <laughs> you got to listen. You got to bloop, bloop. What? <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, Roy, why'd you take that card? Oh, wait. Because <laughs> you broke. You have to take it. Uh, oh, my goodness. I think one of the mistakes people go. make in 8-Minute Empire, though, is hoarding your money and never spending it. You really do need to spend it. Sure, sure, yeah. It doesn't do anything. It's not. A, I think it's a tiebreaker, right? 
It might be. That's actually that was a tiebreaker when last game I had a couple coins left, and you had non yeah. non uh, Tom, so I put me in second. But yeah, but, but usually no you want to spend. No one it. cares who scores second. That's the uh, second is strong. It's a strong position, especially after Roy. Everybody knows Roy is a an eight minute empire. I don't, I don't want to alarm about. you, but I'm right now tied for first place. So. Oof. I, oh, no, I didn't realize Delicio had a scoop in this game. Oh, crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I am alarmed. I'd also like to point out that I have a coin. <gasps> I like some <gasps> others that I won't mention. Fine. Don't talk uh. about it, then. <laughs> I think you should uh, try your hardest to you know, give Z more points, though. Jeez. Okay, I'll uh, do that. He's doing all right on his own. Well, that was a lot of mumbling. He's doing all right on his own. Gotta take that wild Z. Um, no. No, I mean, it's no longer going to be a gem for me, so. Oh. Yeah, but I'll push something. Can't have a gem. Listen, so it can get I... you that one point for the carrot. Whose turn Let's is it? Right I lost. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that was the card I was gonna buy. Yeah, five moves is no joke. No. I don't know what Identity you're doing. Identity no Tom, joke, trying Jim. to come up into my. Huh? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, hey, how did you build the castle? Spaces. How did you build the castle in that opening spot? I thought you couldn't. Yeah, well, I guess you can. You found a way, didn't you? You found a way. Life finds a way. Life uh, finds a way. Uh, this is a tight map, man. Mm -hmm. Wow. I like it. Come on, fellas. Oh, here goes Tom. You Get jerk. Yeah. What are you doing? I what? am reclaiming the homeland for the purple people eaters. Wait, this no, just the purple yours. people. This land is my land. This, this land, land is my land. land. Uh, this land makes me happy. You just switched songs, but all right. I did. <laughs> I totally did. Please don't take my <laughs> homeland away. Hmm. I'm not feeling super what confident. We're doing. I feel like I could trace it back to when I hate drafted Roy. <laughs> you what What's that for me? me? You're thinking you shouldn't have? I'm not sure why you would No, I really me. do. I think Roy would have steamrolled the game. But I didn't know Mike was going to just jump all over the board and randomly go to spots. Mike is a wild card. I, was, I am a wild card. I, I, I had a plan, believe it or not, but the cards didn't play the way that I'd hoped they would. Oh... Uh, uh... Another castle is where over there. There in a castle in the sky. Mike is taking so long <laughs> on his turn. Well, I'm just trying to think, see if there's any way I can. That's what happens when you're broke. <laughs> What's going on right now? <laughs> no, What's, I don't is that from that. like Nightmare Before Christmas? No, that's Castle in the Sky from Les Mis. Mike, please take your turn. Mike, no, please no, take your definitely... turn. Take your turn. Take your turn. <laughs> Mike's taking his turn. Leave Mike alone. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Seriously, just do it. All right, Tom. It. There we go. We're going to be the last two people, so we have to determine how this game works. Yeah, I just realized earlier that I get to determine the card you take. That's fine. 
I know it is. I, like how I am so that. You like, remarkably that's, bad at this game. That's fine. So let me see. This is... Tom should not sing. That. I can do see, that. See, this is why no one ever does sing. Because people always criticize others singing. Yeah, you gotta be nice, y'all. Mm -hmm. when, when, when someone plays a board game, I don't walk up and go, I wouldn't quit your day job. But people say that about <laughs> singing. And Thank I've never... You. Other than people on American Idol, I've never seen people who actually thought they were going to give up their day job from singing. It's just people sometimes um, are a little less than than sweet and polite. It's okay, mm -hmm. Tom. They probably, you know what, we're probably reading it harder than it's meant to be. Maybe they meant more like, oh, <laughs> Tom, don't quit your day job. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Should I just go for the straight point? Do Mr. it. Garcia has won this game, and it sickens me. Yeah. That is not Just true. Mike, why did you move true. into my area up there? You're a... I hate I Mike. Guy, I'm really bad at this game. I had a game. guy I'm just really sitting in Roy's at this continent. Game. He was going to die in Roy's continent. He was doing nothing. Fine, I'm doing this. This is just hate, and I don't care. Wait, what did you do? <laughs> Stop Z, stop Z, stop Z. He's gonna kill me. Murder! Are you kidding me, Tom? <laughs> oh, wait, I that was you actually to be with me to kill him. You don't that have was to the... be with me. I sent a dagger through the air. Where it fell, I knew not where. I thought, oh my goodness, I thought you had to be in the space where you killed someone. Hmm. Are you kidding well, this me? This is weird. That was very jerky. Both that was like incredibly jerky. I think you might have given the game to Roy. Why? All he could do is take that that tower. He can't do anything. I know, but I can get a point off of it. How? Because if I control any other land with it. How are you going to control something? No, By he might it, get a point from like the only point. thing you would get a point from would be the carrot, Roy, because it has to go right, somewhere right. where you are. But if he's tied know, somewhere, he could take it. Oh, you could take. I can like. You could take one of the ones that you're sharing. You could take one of the ones you're sharing with Mike, and then you right, control. Right, right, right. So that and makes I it Mike's fault. You, I feel. I think that's not making the Mike's game, fault. Roy. Mike was yeah, trying to control Roy in this continent. Yeah. How's um, it feel? How's it feel? How's it feel? Whoops. I need something painful. <laughs> you're you're like six the, miles from me yeah, right now. Gameplay. There's nothing Look at you how do. many gems I've got, Tom. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous See, score in gems. Listen, everybody. And somehow. I, knew I had to play low. I knew I had to lay low this game. I had to come in from the behind because they were going to be gunning for me. Do not make and a I victory just, speech. Just ran there. Look at their last last moment. You know. All right, last game. Now? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm rage quitting. I'm taking my ball and going home. <laughs> what are we doing? Man. Am I backing out of this? Yeah, we're playing the last... I backed out. We're playing the last game of these maps we have. Old Europe. Mike needs Mike to step, step up. up. I do. Okay. I really I really don't particularly understand why I am so horribly bad at this game. It's not complicated. That's but weird. yet, I suck. Hmm. We're trying not to spend all my money on the first turn this time. Yeah, I, I won the know. bid. I was gonna say, how did I win the bid last time when I bid zero? What? Are we running? All right. So who is first? I am. <laughs> I think, I think it's Tom, but for some reason, mine's not going, it's not loading up. Yeah, my screen Again. looks blank. What's up? Yeah, so is mine. There we oh, go. there it is. Okay, it took a minute. Whoa, yeah. Tom, look at you just jumping up there already. Wow. I'm in Scandinavia. You're amazing. Ooh, this is a real map. Yeah, that's like Italy right there. And that mm -hmm. 
is Nova Scotia and Tahiti. <laughs> Geography is hard. I don't know. How Mm. Mm. Wow. Like it. I do like the animation in this game a lot. It's really well done. This the the company who makes this game is one of my favorite app app makers. They also make uh Charterstone Istanbul. and Steam in Istanbul. Really well done. I like Istanbul a lot, yeah. Yeah, I mm. saw they make Charterstone, that's neat. I yeah. was thinking about that, Mike. That one looked like a good one. Yeah, look, if I can make one good turn, one good uh, turn a game, I'm okay. I believe you're winning, Mike. Yeah, well, I was winning for I think 20 seconds last game. Two people. <laughs> yeah, but with how long Roy takes this turn, you'll have from... more than 20 seconds this game. After... I I went from 10 points to four points in one turn. In that last game. I don't think that's possible. Look, ask that's Brian Lockett. Little it's little very little. possible. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's I'm not me, seeing a huh? lot of gems. Not yet. They're coming. They're coming. Yeah. Save your money. Hmm. Yeah, back off, candidate. <laughs> well, have fun with your Christmas tree. Hmm. Oh, candidate. Oh, candidate. Show Listen, y'all should be more respectful. We'll Today you. is my day. <laughs> Today, you didn't know? It's Canada Day Day. It is. I didn't even think of that because that was so stupid. <laughs> wow. I'm that's... wearing a I'm wearing a tie for Canada Day. There's a Canadian flag on here. Well, that's like Earth Day, man. It's every every time. This I left my Canada tie at home. You have a Canada tie? Mm. I have a Canada tie. I have a Canada hat actually I could have worn. No way that this one person is worth it. Mm. Wow, maybe we maybe we just go here. You better back off, whatever you do. Delicio's turn. Take your it turn, Delicio. My turn. I'm, I'll take my turn. You're not. I wish this had a timer so we could sir. see how long everyone's turns. Oof, we're taking. I don't know about that, Tom. I don't know if I can handle that kind of pressure. We were almost about to time out playing the uh, during the virtual game con. We played uh, a mm -hmm. Terraforming Mars, and we almost mm -hmm. timed out. Specifically, Jason almost timed out. He's down to <laughs> one minute, and we're wow. like, "Go, Jason! You're gonna time out." How many? How much time uh, did everybody have? So bad. Thirty minutes. I found that I, if you reset, I set the settings on Terraforming Mars to instantly end my turn when I take my second action and to do fast animation, and that slows, that speeds up your time. Ah, uh, okay. Because other people's animation takes on your time. Oh, okay. Oh, boy, get up out of my business. I, I did get out of your business. No, you came right up into my business. Am I on the same continent as you? Might as no. well be. Get out of here. Sounds like you're taking over the map. He really my... is. It's my first time. How did you get everybody? that one guy? How did you get that one guy way over there, Tom? That dude I is took a sweet. five move, and he he was he said, "Siberia, here I come." That's Gandalf. Truck it. Run, and run, Gandalf run, run the great and Gandalf the white. What do you think would win fight. if Gandalf the Grey fought Gandalf the White? Gandalf the White? 
I think Gray would win because when White killed Gray, Gray would turn into White and get, like, extra strength. Oh, snap. Tom just blew my mind. He's not wrong. Fly, I don't think you fools. I don't think you understand <laughs> the hierarchy of the, the Malar or whatever, so... I don't think how, Tolkien how, understood now it. You're so. being, now you're being too much of a nerd. The Malar, <laughs> Listen, I don't... I like don't a duck? How... No, no. The Malar, the, the angels of Middle-earth. Come on, man. How huh? could Gandalf the Great turn Gandalf the White the unless the White was our best up? Saruman of many colors would beat them all, so... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Saruman the Prism. Uh, Wait, is it still Mike's turn? Oh, would yes, you stop obviously. it? This is my favorite part. It's like, take a lot of extra time, but then also do very poorly. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not doing Look at, look at me. I am wrecking <laughs> right now. All I'm right, Thomas, shot. Thomas Freed says, you guys are amazing. Go love the live plays. Go Z. Can't wait to go on another cruise. Which Muppet is your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that question at the end there. I know. It's yeah, great. yeah. Which Muppet? Oh, the favorite? guy. Oh, Statler and Wardolph. Easily. Those are pretty great. I think my favorite is. Uh, I think his name's Beaker. The guy who's like. Yeah. That guy. Me 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 me. My Swedish favorite. Chef is pretty great too. Swedish Chef is is pretty pretty boss. Yeah. Burst it, burst it, burst it. Kermit the Frog. Kermit the Frog. Is Kermit oh, the Frog turn. your favorite? That's so mainstream. I'm just being silly. I was trying to drink my tea. Well, never mind. Anyway, um, whose turn is it? Oh, it's Candy. My turn. I didn't realize it was my turn. I'm going. I do wish it would like flash at me or something sometimes. <laughs> I wouldn't wish I wish the cards were gray when it wasn't your turn, and then they would brighten up when it is your turn. That is I mean, you true. Are they brighten the up. Corner. It's like it's, it's really obvious when it's your turn. I just forget sometimes. Mm -hmm. Alright. Do it. Man, you I mean, are like a diamond maniac. For cheap. You just yeah. love that. That was diamond. the strategy. It's called jamming it up. Mm-hmm. I'm all about those gems. Jim Jam. I'm all about those I'm gems. All about those gems. About the no gems, baby. <laughs> all right. Oh, baby. Jams. Jams. Jam, jam, jams. Holy smokes. How many points does Tom have? 99. It, I just want the map to look purple. That's all I want. I might get that Would you like us to down? leave the room, oh, Tom? Like, exit this this playroom so that you can just take over the map? Because it seems like you're not being very conscientious of the other people in the world. You know, the population. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not all yours. You gotta let other people live here, too. Like I, for example, would like Italy. Can I have Let's Italy? Go. <laughs> <laughs> you may not. Not until you've eaten your vegetables. Uh, Carrot it's like cake. An elder, it's like an elder god bargaining with its, uh, you know, with its parent. Can I consume Italy? Not until you finish <laughs> your vegetables. Fine, I'm going back to the long slumber. <laughs> huh. Hot garbage. Right, I guess I have to. I mean, I would if I were you. Mm-hmm. <sighs> you and your diamonds. Look, and I'm not the one leaving it. I'm not the one leaving him these gem cards anymore. So I don't want to hear about it. I took one of the gems you on did. my turn. There were two there. You did. You did a good job, Roy. Well, I'm glad you guys are now just now finally seeing it, and you know. <laughs> what are you doing, Tom? I am reclaiming the land which was stolen from me by you. <laughs> That's all true. I need to, I need I to think... spread out, man. I'm not doing so well. Respectful and churlish. 
Churlish. <laughs> Churlish. That's one of my Ch favorite Come words. On, I put that when people say, pick three words that people describe Mike. you by, I put churlish. What the world? <laughs> this is my land. Oh, oh who took dude. Iceland, Mike? Yes. It's beautiful. I wanted to take Iceland just because I've been there and I thought that'd be cool, but it was too much work. I would support you in taking Iceland, Tom. <laughs> is Mike winning? He is. This don't, don't worry about the man behind the curtain here. Everybody knows I'm going to find a way to lose this, so let's not even worry at this point. I didn't say we were worrying. No, I know. I forgot how solid this game is, though. I do like this. It's nice back and forth, simple, easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quick and then... This app makes it really clean. It plays well, super smooth. This is the kind yeah. of game that I can see myself sitting down somewhere with a few minutes on my hands and just knocking out a yeah. game of it. You know yeah. what I mean? And it feels mm -hmm. a little more substantial than, I don't know, than like, you know, something else you could be doing browsing something. So that's right. neat. I am enjoying it. What I'm not enjoying is. The way Mike Delisi all of a sudden seems to think he can strategize with the big dogs. You know, <laughs> I, I do what I can. He moved up a league. That's what happened. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm reminded of leagues every time I... I'll take like a couple months off from Hearthstone. I'll turn it on. They'll be like, you're a, you're a chicken. You're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at this. He left and then came back. It came in from another direction. I like it. Wow. All right, Mike is very clearly winning at this point and also came into Norway rude. Rude. <laughs> rude. He just showed hey, up on your shores like, I'm here now. That's part of my heritage. I got to get in on that. Don't Guys, be rude. He's going to win. If we all fight over the main continent and Mike takes the three islands, he wins. Nah. Yep. That's Patently false. The problem is, how can we even get there? Just knife him. What? <laughs> I don't like that. Enough of that just knife him business. Manzi, you're just about diamonds. They're not forever. The song is a lie. Those are not diamonds. These are rubies. Shine right like a ruby. <laughs> Tom, why don't you buy that three card? Oh, that's rude. <laughs> Who's rude here? Why, hello, Z. Oh. Seriously, dude, what is your deal? <laughs> I am going to find you, and I'm going to scorch your lands. Scorch. Mm -hmm. Check the comments for our contest, folk, if you're missing out on it. Winners will be announced tomorrow. I believe we're giving out 17 different games today or something like that. Oh. Oh. As we're wrapping up here, let's talk about stuff going on tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, folks, we'll be doing Board Game Spectacular Breakfast. <laughs> I'll snap. We'll be praying both cross clues and rose ceremony. Me and Z will be joined by no pun included to talk about our top ten convention experiences. Mike and I will be it playing like the Tom new expansion. Just got stabbed. Shh, keep going, Tom. I don't think I, I missed that last part. <laughs> Who stabbed me? What was about no pun included? You said. <laughs> well, I'm probably gonna win Barbarian Hordes because I'm playing Mike. Um. <laughs> We got oh, Roy and I are going to play Cosmic Imperial Encounter Duel. Yeah. Barbarian Hordes. Okay, go ahead. And then at 8 o'clock tomorrow night, we'll be giving out the 14th Annual Dice Tower Awards. Who will win? Woo nice. So all that stuff's tomorrow. That is a long, exciting day. Yeah, it is. It's going to be a big spectacular. Tom, what do you got, man? What's happening? Go. Roy, hey, my Roy's turn. turn. 
Come on now. I, I am care. not Hurry ever up. accused of AP. Hurry up. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that Roy is moving in on you. I'm Lord, really displeased by the fact that no one's going after Mike. No one can There's go after to do Mike. It. He's, he's in his... No one. That super sucks. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Yeah, okay. That is a pretty solid, solid push there, Mike. And you are in really far away places. You are hard, hard to catch right now. I may still lose, but Tom said I needed to step up, so I'm actually trying to make intelligent decisions in this game. Well, I, I don't know about all of that. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Slow Please problem. don't be blaming me for your decisions. <laughs> don't go blaming yourself. I got another achievement. I've apparently recruited 50 people over the course of all the games I played. Okay, okay so Roy has no coins. This is, it's basically me, Roy, and then Z. And Roy, Z does have a bunch of coins. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still quite rich. You are. You are indeed. I like being Ooh. last. That's pretty good. Being last is good. Yeah. Oh, no, that was that was no oh well. Hmm. Okay, I know what I'm just do. gonna go. Who's in first? Delicio? Yeah. Yeah, but I won't be for long. We'll see. You may be king. You may king make Tom on this one. Actually, I don't think you will. It would have to be Z, I think. Z might be able to pull it off. Yeah. Because Z's going to be able to get get the uh, ruby the ruby move. Yeah, to see, I, think that, the... I, think, I think that gave Z the win. I don't want the ruby move, actually. I'm going to... I need to move a lot on the map, so... Ooh, you might, might get the four move. I'm going to get yeah. the four move at the back. All the way at the back, yeah. Because I have the money, yeah, this... so... This gives Z and the win, I think, here. I get this one in here. Then I'm going to get... That was one. I can do Can't two. Can't see it until after three. you confirm it. And I can do this one yeah. for four. I should not have left you that city. That was a bad move. Bam! Wow. Guys, I'm not... Second place! I'm not hearing. Uh, I'm not hearing the the, the trumpeting congratulations. I, I think it just goes to show that me and Z are superior at this game. You know, I mean, just as well, I am. I am awful, but that was that's about as good as I can play. And I still made a dumb move at the end. Because if I didn't leave you that city, there's nothing you could have done. There. Go for resources. Well, no, I I, I was trying to look at resources too. But honestly, if I if I Z would have probably still won because he had all that money. But I would have been able to get second place because you, if you didn't build that city, there's no way you'd have gotten that point. Alrighty, folks. Well, yeah. I need to go home and go to bed. So we're going to end this here. Three games. Z is the champion of all time. Congratulations. I lost all three Roy. games. What? I no, won no, two I think... games. Z won one. Yeah, yeah no, but he no, won the final no. game. We said best out of three. New math. No, that's not... yes. What? <laughs> no, huh? No, as the comments say, as Coralou says in the comments, Zeroy wins again. That's, that's oh, oof. that's because when I play my Zeroy when I play my uh, online games on the app, I always play against a computer opponent, Zeroy, and he's my. I hate him. I want to kill him mm. all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but then he you play with the Mike and you just I'll be adding that one now soon. It will be called Mikey D. Uh huh. All right, <laughs> all right. Make him easy AI. We do need to get going here. We appreciate everyone joining. In less than 12 hours, we'll be back tomorrow with more stuff. I hope you've been enjoying it. Check our website tomorrow to see who won the contests. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. 
I'm Z Garcia. I'm Roy Akane. I'm Mike Delicio. Take care, everybody. Have fun Bye. gaming. <laughs>